Sports. We are sports. We are Last night, an enormous series opened in Denver, and the Marlins came out swinging. Big hits, big runs. Giancarlo Stanton continued his assault on Coors Field. And Marcelo Zuna went grande with a ninth inning slam. Tonight, game two, Marlins, Rockies. On a perfect Colorado Saturday afternoon turning to evening here, the Marlins and the Rockies. Game two of what is an enormous series for the Fish. Miami nudging just over 500, hanging into the wild card. And a little kickball going on before the ball game as the Marlins get ready to face the Rockies. Special treat, A.J. Ramos tonight with the lineup. How do you follow that? Hi, everybody. Rich Waltz along with Tommy Hutton. And that's trying to follow up a 13-run, 16-hit affair last night. For the Marlins, it really felt good to get that out of their system. Yeah, it really did. And and you go back to the pitching. Uh, Henderson Alvarez was able to keep the walks to a minimum. He didn't walk anybody. And just one walk issued by the staff in the ballgame last night. That's what you have to do in this ballpark. You like to get the offense, and you hope Tom Kohler comes out and throws strikes. And you and I have talked about it. The Marlins had been winning games post-All-Star break, but not scoring a lot of runs. That's started to change. And it's not just Giancarlo Stan. Everybody knows he's having an MVP season. But the lineup's starting to have a little more depth. And when Marcelo Zuna is hitting, it's got a lot of depth. Yeah, Marcelo Zuna is on quite a run right now. He had himself a big ball game last night. Uh, his second grand slam of the year, and that really put things out of reach uh, in the ball game. Marcelo Zuna on a five-game hitting streak. He is a streaky hitter. There's no question about it. During the five-game streak, Ozuna is 10 for 20. Now keep that in mind because that's a common theme. He's 10 for 20. Hey, how about against the Rockies this year? He's 10 for 20 with a couple of home runs. One thing to remember about this streaky hitter. Prior to the five-game hitting streak, he was two for 23. So you'd like to see him keep those uh, not as long, keep the bad streaks not as long, and just stay hot, Marcel. And the Marlins will try to stay hot and keep that lineup clicking tonight against the Rockies. Tom Kohler in Colorado. When we get back, the former Mr. Big Salad speaks with Allison Williams.
Anthony Valdespin had a chat before the ball game because Valdespin has just ejected Dinger from the Marlins side of the diamond. Thankfully, Allison Williams remains on that side of the diamond. A dub. Hey there, guys. Tom Kohler on the mound tonight for the fish. And Kohler is trying to get to 10 wins on the season, reaching a double digit win total for the first time in his young career. He's pitched well lately. He's won his last two starts and three of his last five. So, had a chance to chat with Kohler about pitching well and pitching here at Coors Field. You know, getting ahead, getting some early outs, and, and just trying to get the team back in the dugout as fast as possible. You know, when we do that, you score runs. The longer you're on defense, the less chance you have to score. So, can't win if you don't score. So, we got to get back in the dugout as fast as possible. Thoughts on pitching here at Coors Field? Keep the ball down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's it. Is it one of those places, you know, it's a hitter's park. If you get it up a few, you can't let it get to you because that's, that's how it plays. Well, I mean, here. I feel like that's how it is everywhere, though. You know, if you give up a few runs early, no matter where you're pitching, and you, you let it get to you, you're going to have a bad game. So mm -hmm. uh, just because this place is known to be a hitter's ballpark doesn't mean that you change your game plan or change anything. You go out there and you try to put up as many zeros as you can. Kohler has pitched well here at Coors Field. Last year in July when he pitched here, he went seven innings, giving up eight hits and just one run, and the Marlins win. So he'll look to improve to 2-0 here in Denver while the Fish try to improve to 2-0 on this road trip. It's the Marlins and the Rockies. A.J. Ramos with the lineup as the Fish go for game two. And we come back here on Fox Sports Florida. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T Uverse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 800. Pick AT&T. Mobilizing your world by Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. SFHondaDealers.com. In Colorado. Marcelo Zuna. Pre-game ritual. Handshake for everybody. Even the coaches. Oh, nicely done. Now, special treat. Marlins lineup. Here's A.J. Ramos. Hey, what's up, guys? It's A.J. Ramos, a relief pitcher for your Miami Marlins, and I am reading the lineup today. Batting first, playing left field, is Kristen Yelich. Not to be confused with McLovin from Superbad, because that kid has more swag than Yelich. But anyway, this kid can hit. Anyway, batting second is my Doppler ganger, Don Donovan Solano. One day we're going to switch jerseys and uh, see if I can play second base out there. No one will ever notice. 
Batting third, playing right field, is the man, the myth, the legend from Mount Olympian, Giancarlo Michael Cruz Stanton. Batting fourth is Casey. I lead the league in B.O.W. McGee. If you don't know what B.O.W. means, that means balls off the wall. But this guy's an RBI machine, so don't sleep on him. Batting fifth is Garrett. I eat a slice of pizza before every at-bat Jones. He'll be playing first base for us. Batting sixth is Mighty Cell. Twinkle toes around first base Ozuna. Seriously, watch him when he rounds first base. He has those twinkle toes. Batting seventh is J-Rod. Just let your soul glow through those curls. Salt to Lamakia. He'll be catching for us tonight. Batting eight is a Daney. Oof. Hetch of a play. Hetch of a Rhea. Batting ninth and on the mound for your Miami Marlins is my tag team partner for, w, or for WWE, Tommy Two Guns Kohler. And that is your lineup for today. That may be the best uh, player lineup we've ever had on Fox Sports Florida. Just tremendous. Nice job, A.J. Ramos. <laughs> Outstanding. Pinch of ready for the first pitch. Jordan Lyles is ready for the first pitch. But the home plate umpire, Tim Timmons, right now looking into the Rockies' dugout. Lyles, good record. And in this ballpark, a, a nice ERA. But you see just 15 starts, a broken hand. On June 4th, kept him out of the rotation for two months. And Yelich opens the night with a bouncer to second. DJ LeMay who throws him out. And the Rockies get Yelich out, which hasn't been easy to do of late. Defensively, the Rockies line up this way. Yeah, we'll take a look at that defense. Uh, Corey Dickerson, Charlie Blackman, and Brandon Barnes in the outfield. Arenado, Culberson, LeMahieu, and Morneau around that infield. And... Doing the catching, Michael McHenry. Michael McHenry getting a start, and so is Donovan Solano, the doppelganger of A.J. Ramos. Solano drove in a couple last night with a fielder's choice and an RBI double. And Lyles misses away. In the two spot last night was Jeff Baker, and he had a big night. Baker had three hits, including a couple of doubles. And that... Top of the order. In fact, if you want to go all the way one through five for the Marlins with Ozuna hitting fifth, just had enormous nights last night. 13 hits from one through five. Yeah, the top three were eight for 13. Yeah, Jordan Lyles uh, saw him yesterday around the batting cage uh, talking with uh, Jared Kozar. They were with the Astros last year. They were in their rotation. Lyles coming over along with the tonight's right fielder Brandon Barnes in that trade. That's strike three called Timmons. Rings up Donovan Solano and for the Rockies. Just the fact they get to face Sean Carlos Stan with nobody on base is a bit of a relief. Now in Miami. This is, of course, the first series of the season. Stanton banging one over Miami's bullpen. And Lyles goes right after him with a fastball for a strike. 93 miles an hour. That was one of those home runs when you saw the replay that he just let the ball get deep and drove it the other way. We've seen him hit a few that way this year. Last night, three hits, two walks. He drove in three. Stands on base percentage has climbed over 400. He's at 405 and his slugging percentage is a healthy 565. He gets a 2-1 pitch here. And both of those numbers that you talked about lead the National League. Jason McGee on deck. Saturday evening crowd on a 6 o'clock local time start. Still coming into this uh, gorgeous ballpark. At the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Three two down low and Stanton walks. And that pads the on base percentage. Brings Casey McGee to the plate. Let's check the scouting report on. Jordan Lyles his fastball has some sink. We've seen that in some that he's thrown here early. Has a curve and a slider. We've also seen he doesn't like to take too much time on the mound. 
infielders like that. McGee a couple hits last night drove in a run. And you've got Stanton at first. Ten stolen bases this year he's been caught once. You know I'm. I'm thankful that we had A.J. Ramos read the lineups. There have been many times when people have asked me about Casey McGee and asked about how come he's only hit three homers? What's happened to his power? Now I know there's actually a metric to measure that, thanks to Ramos. That's BOW, balls off wall. As uh, Ramos said, he leads the majors in balls off the wall. Right now sitting on a 1 0 count. Hut, you really thought that the, the ground ball the second he hit in the third inning kind of got him going last night. Yeah, I think so. And I think we saw afterwards he walked with the bases loaded and he had a couple of singles. The key takes a healthy cut and sends it into the seats. One of the singles, he pulled the ball off the glove of Arenado, and the other one was uh, one uh, right out of the. Uh, Right out of the first half of the season for him. He banged it right straight up the middle. It's a big night for the Marlins. Simply because the team that holds the second wild card in the National League, the San Francisco Giants, has lost to the Nationals 6 to 2. So the Marlins, with a win, could get within three games of the wild card. They sit four back when uh, things started. They're right now at three and a half back. After that Nationals win. Two one to McGee. Sends it down the right field line hit pretty well Barnes over for it reaches and has it. Boy it was in fair territory if it drops Stanton scores. Instead Barnes makes a nice running catch. And Miami has kept off the scoreboard in the first underway in Colorado. Have it here in Denver. You can see it from the ballpark. The Marlins and the Rockies underway. Jam Lexus brings you the Rockies lineup. Charlie Blackman in center field. Brandon Barnes to start in right. Justin Morneau is at first. Nolan Arenado is at third. Corey Dickerson in left. Michael McHenry the catcher. Charlie Colbert in the shortstop. DJ LeMahieu is at second base. Jordan Lyles slotted ninth. Marlins uh, couldn't stop Arenado last night. He was four for four. Tom Kohler on the hill here in Colorado. He gets Blackman, Barnes, and Morneau. It's been a steady, it's been a solid year for the big right hander leading the club, leading the staff in strikeouts with 116. And you heard him talking to Allison saying, you gotta keep the ball down, but you know what? You have to do that just about every place you pitch. Blackman a couple hits last night. Rockies uh, had hits and they had opportunities last night. They banged out 13 hits. 
But Henderson Alvarez for six. AJ Ramos, Brian Morris, and Sam Dyson for an inning apiece it was enough to get the Marlins by on a 13 5 win. Of course, that uh, nothing like the uh, Twins and Tigers, where last night the Twins scored, what was it, 20 runs last night? 20 runs. And they followed it up the first end of a doubleheader by scoring a dozen and beating the Tigers 12 to 4. Kohler bounces that one in the dirt. We talked about Kohler and some of his numbers this year. He is in the top 20 in National League starters with batting average against. And that's the lowest in the current rotation for the Marlins. So among all Marlins starters, he's got the lowest batting average against. Well, we talked about it too. He leads the staff in strikeouts. A couple of innings, he'll go over 150 innings. Coming off a, a really good win against Arizona, gave up six hits, just a couple of runs in six innings. He's two and two on a good hitter and a good leadoff man in Charlie Blackman. I think sometimes, Rich, I think we we all tend to focus on. Well, they've been the bad innings. Tom Kohler's had a start where he has a bad inning. But you know what? When you look at the big picture, his numbers are very solid for a number three, four starter on any staff. There's so much value in the game right now for a starting pitcher who can make 32, 33 starts, get to 200 innings. And Kohler seems to be that kind of guy right now. Barnes on deck. Full count on Charlie Blackman. Well, that's right. This is start number 26 for Tom Kohler tonight. Liner to left. Yelich in the sun makes the catch. Defensively, here's how the fish line up behind Kohler. Because of the earlier start, a little different sun to deal with. The defense brought to you by Ram. There's Yelich and Ozuna and Stanton. Also, there was more cloud cover last night when the game started. Casey McGee and Echevarria, Solano, Garrett Jones in there. He has tremendous offensive numbers here at Coors Field. And Jared Salta Lamacchia on a hitting streak. He's behind the plate. 28 year old Brandon Barnes climbs in now. His hometown is where the Marlins are headed next. Anaheim. Cypress Junior College. And Barnes takes a strike. Sixth round pick by the Astros in 05. It took him a while to get to the big leagues. Jam shot little pop up and it's Echeverria right in front of Solano. Two ships crossing behind second base. And here is Justin Morneau. Tonight, and it happens often, my partner and I oftentimes think alike. <laughs> But we were doing our pregame prep, looking through the notes and looking through the league leaders. And I think within five minutes of each other, we both discovered that Justin Morneau is leading the National League in hitting at 319. And, and I, there's, I think the other surprise, Rich, was that Ben Revere is second there's a, in the a, league. There's a real nondescript group behind him, too <laughs> Matt Adams, Josh Harrison, and then Yasiel Puig. Center field, a lot of room out there, and of course, so is Ozuna. He's there and he makes the catch. And a one, two, three first for Tom Kohler.
in high definition and at high altitude thanks to H.H. H. Gregg. Second inning in Denver, Coors Field, Miami, and the Rockies. Marlins big winners last night. Tonight, a new day and a new game and a chance for Garrett Jones to get a start in a ballpark that he is uh, absolutely eaten up and against a pitcher that he's had great success. And just like that, on cue, Garrett Jones sends one into center field for a base hit. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing, the, uh, the psychological part of this game. And I'm sure everybody in the dugout, you and I talked to Garrett Jones, talked to him about, hey, you got good numbers here, have a good night tonight. And boy, all of that's planted in his head, and he goes up there, hits the first pitch for a base hit. He's now 10 for 17 against Lyles, of course. When Lyles was pitching for the Astros, those two faced each other a lot in the uh, National League Central. And in this ballpark, Jones's average is uh, at 400 now. And here's Ozuna. All he did last night was go three for five with a grand slam and drove in five total. And Lyles bends one for a ball. It's one and oh. Marcelo Ozuna, five game streak. Tommy documented it 10 for 20. A couple doubles, three homers in that span. Got jammed and he fouls it off. Last night we were telling you between Yelich, Ozuna, and Stanton, the percentage of the team's RBI is coming from the outfield and the Marlins leading the major leagues in that department. Brewers, Dodgers, Braves, Rockies, so three outfielders driving in a lot of runs. Up the middle into center field the base hit for Ozuna Jones will stop at second and Ozuna has his fourth hit of the series and Miami has something going here in the second Salta then Echeverria coming up well a six game hitting streak now for Marcel Ozuna all he's done during those six games got 11 hits and 21 at bats talked about the three home runs you know he's locked in when you see base hits like that. Salto Lamacchia now. Drove in a run with a bases loaded walk. Also singled last night. Salty's hit well in this ballpark. Hasn't played a lot in this park. This is his fourth game. Was here for a couple of games last year. He's made the most of those four games, though. Big swing and a miss. Miami at 64 and 63. They have crept within three and a half of the wild card with the loss by the Giants to the Nationals. Six to two the final there. Chance to get to three with a win tonight. So a lot of good things can happen for the fish if they win this ball game. They'd get two over. They would have uh, won this series. Well, certainly a, a great way to start the road trip with the win last night. But you want to just continue. You want to follow it up. Salta Lamacchia goes after a high fastball, 92 out of Lyles, the 6'4, 210 pounder, Hartsville, South Carolina. Ball again and Salta Lamacchia strikes out. If you've got a group, want to bring them to a ball game, there are party areas and sweet rentals to be had, special event nights, fundraisers. You can experience Marlins baseball with a variety of group packages. 305 480 2523 or go to marlins.com slash groups. House divided there. 
Yeah, got the uh, red orange Marlins cap looking good between the two Rockies caps. And Chavaria with Kohler on deck. And this certainly an important at bat. If the Marlins want to get anything out of this inning. Kohler just two for 38 on the season. Echeverria one for five last night. During the Charlie Blackman at bat. A foul ball was hit up. He got it. He gave it to. Now, the kid in the Rockies had. What's up with that? Well, look how sad the kid in the Marlins cap looks. Echeverria reaches out, lines it to center, and Blackman runs it down. You know the problem there if that happens behind the dugout players see that and they'll give a ball to the, the kid that didn't get a ball but that's up in the uh, second deck that's so off to our left we need to get Allison up there and, and, and get the the other kid with the Marlins cap we need to get him a ball. Oh look it's just high five over his head. That's not cool Tommy. No, I, I, I feel bad for that kid. That's not right. Allison Williams, are you down there? I think I'm going to have to make my way up. Yeah, there. they're they're in the yeah. front row. They're in the front row of that second deck, right but above the dugout. But I can't go. I can't go empty-handed. I got to get a ball. You got to take a ball. Yeah. You know Absolutely. what? Absolutely. You got to take more than a ball. You got to really dazzle that kid and make the other two guys jealous, <laughs> and make make them feel how that kid felt. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I mean, a ball. If you can find a, a cap or, or something, a batting glove. All right. I, I like where your head's at. I'm on it. Yeah. All right, good. Make, make those other guys with the Rocky hats feel some pain just like that kid did. Poor guy. Yeah. His dad just said, hey, you get the next one. He's going to get a visit from Allison Williams, which is, I mean, you take that, you get a ball, and whatever else you can find. Kohler takes in. I mean, you, you look at a situation like that. There may be so much more to the story. They may have been to a game earlier, and maybe the other kid got the foul ball. So maybe this was his turn to get the foul ball. We don't know, but we're just going on what we saw. We're going to make oh, it right. So sad. We're going to make it right. <laughs> see, Allison said, see? We're going to make it right. I would imagine I'm not sure what the conversation there would be about with the pitcher up with Tom Kohler hitting maybe maybe about signs with a runner at second but they've had that situation for a couple of hitters. You think Kohler would pick that up if uh, Jones knew the signs and was flashing him to him. No. <laughs> OK. <laughs> he obviously didn't know that one was coming. And it's two and two. This was a part of the order last night and also in the second inning after consecutive hits three hits Remember Solano hit into a field of choice picked up an RBI and Henderson Alvarez hit a sack fly so the Marlins got a couple of runs from the bottom part of the order. Kohler is overdue. Check sway and he went around and the Marlins are done they strand two. Let's hope Allison Williams can solve that issue.
Fuller on the on the mound. Hey, fan photo time. Tweet your photo. Hashtag it FL fan photo. It's a chance to have it shown in the telecast. It is the AT&T fan photo. Gorgeous night here in Denver tonight. Henderson Alvarez has a baseball, has signed it, and now Allison Williams is on her way. Go get him, Allison. Very nice. So that kid is going to end up with an all-star baseball. An all-stars autograph on a baseball, yeah. That's pretty slick. Last night's winning pitcher. And you know what? He's going to turn to the, the, the other kid who got the ball. You, boy, you can, he, you, that's, uh, I mean, just remember the face that, that that youngster has right now. And and in about two or three minutes when Allison gets there, I can't wait. I can't wait. She is going to rock his world. Oh, it's going to be great. Here's Arenado now. Well, in the meantime, Tom Kohler and the Marlins are going to try to Retire Nolan Arenado. He had a tremendous ball game last night. Arenado was a four for four game. He had a four hit game a few days ago as well before the Marlins got to town. Arenado, Corey Dickerson, and Michael McHenry. Now, Tommy Hutton gave himself a homework assignment last night. Nolan Arenado. I did, yeah. I talked to uh, Christian Yelich. Remember, we had that shot of. Uh, Yelich when he was over at third base and he was talking uh, with Arenado. They had a nice conversation and and yes uh, Christian Yelich said both certainly from Southern California played on some high school travel teams together. So they they go back to their high school days and have been friends and as I mentioned last night and I certainly a hold true to it a couple of young players are going to be around and have uh, really good careers Arenado's. 23, Yelich 22. Bouncer to short, Echevarria to his left, across the diamond in time. Kohler looks sharp. Rich, you, you talked to uh, some of the infielders. You talked to Perry Hill. You saw that hop that Echevarria got. It, it came up a little bit. Not one of the better infields. No, the Marlins uh, last night discovered that the uh, infield here at Coors Field is very hard. A lot of wicked bounces like that one. And uh, not many infielders were very happy after last night's game. And Perry Hill and his coaches, when they hit fungos today, hit them very softly because uh, Perry said he didn't want anyone taking one of the chops before the ball game. Here is Corey Dickerson. Dickerson's having a, a nice year. There's Perry Hill. He's got his uh, infield shifted. Well, he's always in the same spot, so all the infielders know where to look to find Perry in the dugout. Yeah, I'm just thinking that that's the the uniqueness and and one of the real neat things about this game. Every infield's different. People always ask how come uh, the symmetry of the fields aren't all the same. Well, they're all different. It it, it just makes for a different ballpark. Your home ballpark. And you try to get all the infields smooth and nice, but they're all different. Well, a lot of it depends on the uh, temperature, mm -hmm. the climate, the altitude. You know, when the Marlins played in, in the old football stadium, uh, they could never grow the grass very long because of the type of grass and because it was a football field as well. And so once they moved into Marlins Park with the new type of grass, they're able to, to grow it a little bit higher. Central division in both leagues always seems to have big, thick, lush infield grass. Yeah, geography has a lot to do with it. I think Allison Williams is up there. All right, guys, I'm going to come introduce myself. I haven't said anything yet. How are you guys? Good. How are you? Good. I saw you make a, a nice catch on that foul ball earlier. Badge. What's your name? Eric Nelson. Eric, and who are you with here, Eric? Elliot. Elliot. Nice to meet you. And? Henry. And Henry. So I have a question. After you caught that foul ball, we noticed that you, you handed it right over to Henry and not Elliot. How come he got the foul ball? Well, we already discussed that. Henry's primary sport is baseball, and Elliot's is basketball. 
So the deal is Rocky stuff goes to Henry, Nugget stuff goes to Elliot. Okay, but Elliot, you're a Marlins fan? Uh, yeah. How did that make you feel when you didn't get that foul ball? Um, I don't really know. Not that bad. Not that bad. You looked pretty sad. So I thought... Something's coming. I thought maybe we should try and cheer you up. Because I know it's not your primary sport, but you like baseball, right? Yeah. And you're a Marlins fan, so we thought you deserved a ball. Nice. What's on there? Thank you. And it's signed by Henderson Alvarez, who was an all-star this year and the winning pitcher from last night. What do you think about that? Oh, thanks. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. So now you guys both got great keepsakes from your game here, right? Thank you very much. You're welcome. How come you're such a big Marlins fan? Um, I don't really know. Who's your boy? Who do you like? I like, um, just because I really like John Carlos Stanton. Yep. All right. Well, you got, you got an autographed baseball now from the guy that went to the All-Star game with them this year. How about that? Yeah, that's really cool. All right. Thank you, guys. You guys enjoy the game, all right? Now, we just got to make sure, you know, it's even. We don't want anybody getting jealous very nice. of the Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a good Thank night. You Great work, Allison. Good stuff. Great work. And so, so there was a little inner story to that. Uh, the the one son's primary sport is baseball, and the other's is basketball. But, but did you see when Allison asked him how it made him feel? He, he looked at Dad long and hard before he answered. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the way Rich that Dad discussed it before the game. That if if I do get a foul ball, then you know he discussed who it was going to go to. See, look at the face now. I mean, and remember. See, that's not the same face. No. How cool is that? <laughs> there, <laughs> that was the look before Allison got there with the ball. <laughs> and now he's got a Henderson Alvarez ball. Look at his brother checking it out. That one hit hard, but foul. Dad getting ready to take a picture, and then they're going to text that, maybe tweet it somewhere. Yeah, you know why? Because Dad already took a picture of his brother <laughs> and sent it out. <laughs> That's awesome. One and two. Michael McHenry, Rockies catcher. Marlon saw him as a pirate. He's actually had uh, a nice year, albeit a, a short one, 102 at bats. But the uh, stocky catcher, four homers, 353 average, seven doubles. Kind of nice for him to be here. He grew up in Nashville and he watched Todd Helton. In college, watch Todd Helton and R.A. Dickey. Well, it must have been extra special for him to be in a Rockies uniform this uh, earlier this homestand. It wasn't just one day, it was a, a whole weekend of Todd Helton ceremonies. Runner goes, McHenry bounces one over the middle, Solano steps on the bag, fires the first in time to get the out. And a double play, Solano turns it. Corey Dickerson still arguing out at second base. Scoreless in Colorado.
feet and the Rockies scoreless. Terrific play by Donovan Solano. At first, it looks like Tom Kohler wanted to do that backhand move, took his glove down, and remember, watch Solano. He's moving over to cover the bag because the runner's on the move. If he's not, that ball might go into center field. So Solano made a nice play, was able to catch it, and then just step on the bag in front of the slide and complete the double play. He's due up second in the inning. Top of the order, Yelich, Solano, and Stanton. And Yelich takes ball one from Jordan Lyles. Miami's yep. had a base runner in each inning, two of them to start the second, but don't have a run yet. Yelich did something we don't see very often his first time up. Leading off a game, going after the first pitch. That tells me he knew, okay, I'm going to get a fastball, see what I can do with it. He grounded out. Every now and then, he'll, if a pitcher thinks he can groove one, he'll jump on it. He'll ambush a pitcher. There he is on the first pitch. 500 plate appearances. Just 95 swings. So all he's done in his last 42 at bats is get 21 hits. 21 for 42. He gets hit there. And Miami has their leadoff runner aboard. So Yelich hit by a pitch. Got it right in the hamstring. Yeah, certainly not what Lyles wanted to do there. Fox Sports Supports is proud to collaborate with Stand Up to Cancer, a groundbreaking initiative created to accelerate innovative cancer research that gets new therapies to patients quickly in order to save lives now. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. It's only the second time in his career he's been hit. First time this year, he was hit once last year. Let's see if he's on the move. Solano calls time after a long wait by Lyles. I always think, especially when you have his speed and when you have Solano hitting in the number two spot, it always gives you that uh, good ingredient for a hit and run. Solano. Rolls one to the left or to the right side to the left of LeMahieu, who flips it on over to first. Yelich ends up in scoring position. Here comes Stanton, and we'll see what Lyles does with Stanton. Tommy Hutton last night documented how, in a spot like this, uh, most of the times you feel just put him on, but at Coors Field, you put guys on, you get more base runners on, and big innings happen. And Walt Weiss certainly knows that over that other dugout. So Stanton climbs in. Lyles walked him in the first. Having said all that, you have the feeling if the count goes to 2 and 0, oh, they might just put him on. Second year as a skipper. They've got McGee on deck. Stanton, little looper down the uh, right field line. It's going to fall for a base hit. Yelich around third. Stanton racing for second. And there's the danger when you try to delicately pitch around a guy like Stanton. It doesn't have to be down the middle of the plate. He's strong enough that he muscled that one over Morneau's head. An RBI double. Yelich scores 1 0 Miami. Hey, and a great read by Christian Yelich, who got a good jump. He saw that ball was going to get over the head of Morneau. There's the fastball in. There's that muscle strength of Giancarlo. And he does a good job of picking it up and getting a double. So for Stanton, he has 61 extra base hits. Just another area that he leads the National League in. He has 28 double to go with 32 homers. Now McGee. With a runner in scoring position. Breaking ball. McGee got it off the end of the bat. Dickerson in. And it's Culberson who makes the catch. Culberson with Dickerson right behind him. And here comes Garrett Jones. Boy, McGee saw breaking ball. He fired the hands and just got it off the end of the bat. 
Here's an interesting scenario as well. You get Garrett Jones who's single. First pitch has unbelievable numbers. 10 for 17 against Lyles. But you have one of the hotter hitters that the Marlins have going on deck in Marcelo Zuna. It's a great opportunity for the fish with Stanton out at second. And two outs. Jones takes up and in. Great individual numbers against Lyles. There's Ozuna. And incredible numbers in this ballpark. This is the 15th game for Jones here. He's driven in 14 runs in his 14 previous games with an average of about 400 now. And that includes the base hit that line drive single back in the second. Eight doubles, four homers. A lot of production here at Coors Field. Miles trying to stay in. And it's two and one. Yelich hit by a pitch. Moved up on the Solano ground ball. Scored on Stanton's blooper down the right field line. Crowds him again with a fastball. There it is. 408 now. <laughs> and he had a course field rip. <laughs> We've seen Lyles a couple of times. He did it with Salta Lamacchia back in the second inning. Climb the ladder, go up with that fastball, and try to get the hitters to chase. He got Salta Lamaki to chase. He got Garrett Jones to chase that one. Well, on that Fox track, you could see the ladder. It's all up and it's all in. And so was that one. If he had a really good changeup, changeup's his third pitch. He will use it, but probably not at three and two. Got him with a breaking ball. And Jones strikes out. Miami's on the board. John Carlos Stanton with an RBI double. And the fish lead it. One nothing. In Denver tonight, bottom of the third. If you put down a 2015 Marlin season ticket deposit now, you can walk off with half of your deposit in complimentary 2014 tickets. Ticket plans start as low as $380.
call 1-877-MARLINS or go to marlins.com slash 2015 tickets. Charlie Culberson, DJ LeMayhew, and Jordan Lyles for the Rockies. Tom Kohler has faced the minimum thanks to a, a nice play by Donovan Solano. A double play to finish off the second. Culbertson's liner will find grass. And on a hop, Ozuna has it. And the Rockies have their leadoff runner aboard. Did you know that this uh, copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority? The Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. Accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Yeah, we talked about the uh, consistency, Rich, of Tom Kohler since the All Star break. He's had six starts. He's gone three and two as an ICRA, a little over three. Marlins arriving in Colorado to open the series last night and last night the Rockies even though their their record right now is 27 under they were a 500 team at home going into last night just a different ball club here this is an interesting matchup for Tom Kohler facing uh, DJ LeMay who you don't think too much about it he's the number eight hitter but in a small sample size, LeMayhew's five for six against Kohler. And LeMayhew had a nice night last night. He was three for four. It didn't miss by much. LeMayhew, known for his glove at second base. Runner goes, hit and run, bouncer into left field. It's a base hit. Culberson on his way to third, and he's in there, and the Rockies are set up with Lyles coming up and runners at the corners. Well, nicely executed. And Walt Weiss, who I'm sure as a player, he was called upon to hit and run a few times. So that's a beautiful execution, first and third, with the runner on the move. LeMahieu, six for seven now against Tom Kohler. All right, let's see how the Rockies play this. Lyles can swing the bat. A 212 average, a homer, and three RBIs. Middle infield's back for two. He's a pretty good athlete in high school. He was an all, all state receiver. He'd actually committed to South Carolina. Even his numbers are better at Coors Field. There's <laughs> Culberson. And LeMayhew across the diamond. Up the middle, Echeverria flip there. Solano's turn, double play. Rockies get the run. Marlins get the two. And so this game is tied at a run apiece. Well, he certainly uh, trade the run for a couple of outs early in the ball game. That's one of the things you leave yourself open for if you're Walt Weiss and you have a pitcher who swings the bat a little bit. Charlie Blackman now. Blackman lined out to left. Second time through for the Rockies. Ball in a strike. You 
you know you've had a good year when during the course of the season you've already had two five hit games. <laughs> and Charlie Blackman has had that. It's going to help you become an all star. He has some speed at the top of the order too. 22 stolen bases. And of course the guy that got off to just an incredible start in April and May. Marlon saw that firsthand. That one is over McGee's head, trickles down the line. Blackman speeding towards second. And he's got a double. And we've seen a couple of hits like that. Blackman's and of course Stanton's down the right field line that produced a run for the fish. Yeah, very similar. Both balls uh, not hit very hard at all. This one may have been off the end of the bat. No play for Casey McGee, and then just kind of skids away from him. And you talked about the speed of Charlie Blackman. He's out of the box in a hurry. Got himself a two out double. Brandon Barnes now. He popped a shortstop. His first time up. To left. It's well hit. Yelich track. Gone. Well, I'm not sure if that's a curveball or change up. It was off speed, high 70s. But it was a hanger. It stayed up. It stayed in. And Barnes was all over it. Well, a couple of small things can really add up in this ballpark. Curveball. Actually, not up that much, but it stayed on the inner part of the plate. If it's a little bit away, Barnes isn't able to pull it that way. If Yelich had a little more time to get to the wall, Tommy, I think he catches that, or at least gets a glove on it. That ball wasn't that far over. And you saw the youngster catch it. Yelich was just climbing the wall when it scooted over. Didn't have a lot of hang time. And you're right. He's, he's close, and, and he is able to make that catch if he gets there, but it didn't have enough hang time. He left his uh, footprint on the wall, though. For Barnes, his seventh homer. It's a 3-1 Rockies lead. That one hit the center, Ozuna, over and there, and makes the catch. But the Rockies erupt for three.
A two run lead going to the fourth. Lexus of Pembroke Pine gives you the Marlins broadcast schedule. Tomorrow, 3 30 start for Marlins Live, 4 o'clock ball game. And then Monday and Tuesday night from Anaheim, 9 30 start for Marlins Live, late night with the fish. Wednesday night, no television. Friday night, back on against the Braves. 7 30 game, 7 o'clock, Marlins Live. One of the rare nights that uh, the Marlins are not on. And Wednesday night game in Anaheim. Marcelo Zuna, Jared Saltalamacchia, Danny Echevarria. Jordan Lyles has a lead now. By the way, Rich, those those two runs uh, after the double and the home run, those runs hurt because it looked like Tom Kohler was going to get out of the inning. He uh, got the double play and Rockies tied the game. But then just like that, a bloop double and a home run and two more runs for Colorado. We had a chance to look at Yelich uh, trying to climb the wall from our friends at Root Sports. Look at how close this is. Wow. And like I said, if he had just a, another half second to get there and make the leap, that was a, a ball that he could have brought back in. But he, as you pointed out, not enough hang time. So Tlamaki takes a strike. Jared struck out back in the second. Busy day in Major League Baseball. And of course, a big score for the Marlins. The Giants go down six to two to the Nationals. Fish four behind the Giants when play started for the second wild card so three and a half now but they need to win this ball game to draw within three or else they're back at four. Games going on right now you've got Atlanta in Cincinnati that game was delayed but they have started it it's bottom of the first so it's a La Mafia walks. So the up to the minute look at the wild card standings and key games to watch. The fish within three and a half. St. Louis is winning in Philly. Pittsburgh is uh, beating Milwaukee. That's in the top of the sixth. You see the final, the Nationals winning. And the Braves and the Reds. The uh, Braves bailed out by another Justin Upton home run in extra innings. Last night, Echeverria now shoots a ground ball. LeMayhew can't get it, trickles by him. And the Marlins end up with runners first and second. And Kohler coming to the plate. That should be a base hit, and it is. And I think you saw the, uh, the effects of the infield we were talking about earlier. A little hard, a little tricky hop there for LeMayhew. And Etch gets himself a base hit. Rich, I was just looking at that Pittsburgh box score, a thing that stands out to me. First baseman, Pedro Alvarez, with a couple of home runs in that game. Be interesting to see if that move takes a lot of pressure off of him because he had that, uh, that thing where you can't throw it. What was it, 22 throwing errors when we were in there? Yeah. And he had 24 errors at the time. They took him out of the lineup. They have rebranded him at, at first base. And of course they already have. A couple of first basemen. Mike Davis Gabby Sanchez. Let's see if Kohler's bunting. And he has to get out of the way of that fastball. It's one and oh. I was looking rich you were talking about. Justin Upton with the big home run last night. Upton with six home runs and 23 RBIs in August. Coming into their game tonight, Upton on a 13 game hitting streak, and it's been very productive. Hit him. If he was pulling back, it's a hit batter. If he was bunting at the ball, it's a foul ball. It appeared he was trying to pull back to get out of the way of the pitch. 
I think it but we'll have to see a lot of help uh, the home plate umpire Tim Timmons needs to check with Tim Welke. Looks like he's pulling back. Well, He's definitely pulling back. So if it hit his hand. If it hits his hand. Yeah, it did. He was he wasn't bunting at the ball. If he's bunting at the ball and it hits his hand. His hands part of the bat. Well, Mike Redman having that discussion right now. Well, this is where I think uh, home plate umpire needs to get help from Tim Walkie at first base because he has a good angle. Absolutely. He's he's got the best angle of any of the umpires. Okay, he's out there. Pitch is coming in. He's coming back. And it and hits it's it. his hand. And that's a hit batter. It is. Wow. I don't I mean it depends on what the call is. As far as challenge if they're saying that he attempted to bunt the ball. You can't challenge that because then that is a check swing. Well they must be saying that. Kohler gets the bunt down and it's a good one. If they said that it hit the bat and he had pulled back. Then you can challenge that because then that's a hit batter right. I mean that's. Reviewable. A foul tip. Well, it's, boy, they're, that's there. Evidently saying that it was a foul tip. But needless to say, Tom Kohler still got the job done. Here it is. He's pulling back. He wasn't attempting to bunt at the ball. Maybe they're just saying it didn't hit him, and that it hit the bat, and that it hit the bat. Well. What the Marlins get is second and third and two outs and they get Yelich at the plate. And they got a nice sacrifice bunt from Kohler. They'd rather have the bags loaded in one out with Yelich up but. You take what you can get right now and you're down two. Hit by pitch is eligible for review. A foul tip is not. So they must have called it a foul tip. Yeah. This is an area, by the way, for Christian Yelich that we haven't talked about a lot, and given the fact that he hits leadoff. But Yelich coming into this game hitting over 300 with runners in scoring position. 305. See, to me, that's a, a, a gray area that needs to be tightened up. If you can't challenge a, a foul tip, but you can challenge a hit by pitch, what if it's either or? We'll have to talk to Tom Kohler, too, tomorrow to find out if that ball, in fact, hit him on the head or if it was a foul tip. No, I hit the finger. You can tell by the way he reacted. Well, that's a concern too. Obviously, his pitching hand. Three one, and it's out. And so Yelich walks. Bags are loaded. Here's Solano. Tell you what, it, it did not look as if Jordan Lyles wanted to throw anything close to Christian Yelich, who has been on base now twice. He doesn't have a hit, but he was hit by a pitch and walked. So that on base percentage continues to go up. Solano takes outside and Lyles trying to dial it back in. Remember, he's walked two in this inning. He walks all to Lamakia and he just walked Yelich. Boy, miss breaking ball. You you have to feel he's gonna give Donovan Solano something to hit with Stanton on deck. Got great speed at first two. 
if Solano can bang one in the gap here. The outfield is not deep at all. No, they're not. I mean, this is as shallow as you'll see an outfield playing at Coors Field. Solano has a couple of home runs this year. He's got a 2 0 pitch. It's up and it's 3 0. Well, the Marlins were able to uh, get a bases loaded, a couple of bases loaded walks last night. Boy, and they've got Stanton on deck, so that you know that that bat is going to be glued to the shoulder of Solano. And he missed. And the Marlins have a run, and here comes Stanton with the bags loaded. It's 3 2. I think it goes back, Tommy, to the Yelich at bat. And as you pointed out, they were working very carefully to him. And remember what happened when the Rockies tried to work carefully to Stanton. Well, he got enough for one. It was a, a fastball in. He got jammed a little bit, but blooped a double down the right field line. While the Rockies talk it over, the Gecko arrives. Tom Kohler showing off his wound. Jeff Baker, our Geico quote, always good for a quote or two. When you see us taking a lot of walks, I like our chances. It just takes one guy to win, get a big hit. Well, Jeff Baker got a few of those big hits. Three hit night last night, a couple of doubles. Remember, he came out of the game, and we were trying to determine why that move was made. He's been bothered by a bad sinus infection. It was just really acting up on him late in the game last night, so Mike Redmond made the change. There was no choice for Lyles but to go right after Stanton, who's been walked, and then blooped the double down the right field line to drive in a run. Check swing, no swing. Five career grand slams. Bases filled with fish. And Stan fouls one back. Appropriately here at Coors Field. Coors Light cold hard fact. When Kohler starts. Balls leave the yard. The one two and a swing and a miss Stanton strikes out and Lyles gets out of it three two Colorado.
Florida is brought to you by Blue Bell Ice Cream. By the Florida Department of Transportation, reminding you to drive sober or get pulled over. And by Hyundai, get the lowest prices of the year during Hyundai's model year-end clearance sale. Confluence Park, I think if you look closely, you'll see Tommy Hutton ride by on his rented bike. I did. I, I went right over that bridge. There's a, there's a Starbucks off to the right. I wound around and uh, went past uh, the uh, Broncos football stadium. Nolan Arenado, just a gorgeous day. Corey Dickerson and Michael McHenry. Denver is one of those cities that has the uh, those bikes that you can uh, rent right on the street. You just uh, pop the credit card in and pop the bike out, ride it anywhere you want. You can drop it off anywhere you and want. And there's lots of those. What do they call it? The B uh, B ride. B ride. B cycle. So uh, let's see. Sports Authority Stadium. It's the uh, Broncos Stadium. They were getting ready. They have a game there tonight. Actually, Broncos playing a preseason game against the Texans. Arenado went after a 3-0 pitch and he hit it hard into left field. And the Rockies have their leadoff man aboard here in the fourth. This three-game set concludes tomorrow here in Colorado. And the South Florida Honda dealers get you ready for it. Greg Mittervini and Carl Pavano. Part two of Allison Williams' feature of Casey McGee in Japan. A Dub, what would you learn about uh, Japan and Casey McGee? I thought one of the most interesting things he revealed when I chatted with him was the hesitation he had in signing the contract to go play there. He really did not think he would be coming back to the big leagues once he signed that contract to go play in Japan. After he got there, the family came there, he settled in. He really enjoyed his time there. Baseball is a little bit different. They'll, they'll play a little bit different defensively. Um, they'll do anything just to score one run. They'll, they'll bunt and so forth. Uh, they play to ties, which is a little unusual. So some differences, uh, especially within the pitching, a lot of more fork balls. Um, it can, it can be a whatever situation, and they won't give in. It doesn't mean they'll throw a fastball just because they need a strike. So the baseball was different. And then also uh, a lot of changes within the culture, the food, and so forth. Uh, the travel schedule, much easier there. So all that stuff was really interesting. That was kind of what we went over today. Tomorrow will be more about his experience winning, winning the championship there. And the coolest part about that is that the region where the Rakuten uh, Golden Eagles play, the Rakuten Golden Eagles, uh, is the same area where the tsunami hit in 2011. So he said when they won, the entire city just erupted and embraced them because it was very similar to, to what Boston went through last year with the bombing and then winning the World Series and when the Saints won after Katrina in New Orleans. He kind of compared it to that. But he said just the way the fans appreciated and embraced that team for winning the franchise's first Japan Series title was really special for him. Yeah, that is that great shot we saw of uh, he and uh, Masahiro Tanaka uh, receiving postseason awards after the final game of that series. That one back up the middle. Dickerson into center, and the Rockies are starting to barrel up Tom Kohler now. They touched him for three in the third, including a two run homer by Brandon Barnes. Two solid singles open the fourth. And here is McHenry. Uh, Dicker Dickerson now two for two, two singles against Tom Kohler. But it was McKendry who's coming up. McKendry hit into a double play back in the second inning. That sounds like some good stuff. Allison talking to uh, Casey about his experience in Japan. Michael McKendry has one of the better nicknames in baseball, the Fort <laughs> Fort McKendry, which is in Baltimore, Baltimore Harbor. <laughs> Producer John Sulcer lobbing in a uh, piece of trivia that Francis Scott Key did some of his best work at Fort McHenry. And the fastball up to Michael McHenry. Star Spangled Banner.
very educational tonight. The strike to McHenry. Right now, Tom Kohler would like to have his defense help him out. Well, his defense did help with McHenry's last at bat. That was the shot over the middle. With Dickerson running, it brought Solano to the bag and he turned a nifty 4 3 double play. And Kohler right now hasn't walked anybody. You know, it's a, it goes back to what we talked about uh, earlier. It's a, it's a survival mode for a starting pitcher. It's a one run game. That's what he has to tell himself. He's given up three runs, but it's a one run game. Marlins bullpen is stirring right now. And you try to survive because you know your offense is going to put up some runs. Arenado's tagging. Ozuna got a good run at it. And he'll go halfway stop. Echeverria cuts it. Boy, that's scouting. Arenado, you know, it was deep enough. But once he saw Ozuna get that patented run up to the ball, he thought better of it. A scouting report has gotten out there about Marcelo Ozuna's arm. And not only did he time it well, get the momentum going, but he came up, made a perfect throw to Echeverria, who was thinking about maybe trying to double off the runner at second base, double off Arenado. There it is. Good timing, perfect throw, right on the money at the cutoff, man. That's where, you know, Brent Butler talks about Ozuna and how instinctive he is. You, the, it's hard to teach outfielders technique like that. There are guys in the big leagues that have been playing the outfield for a long time that, that don't have that. This one a little different. He got to range far to his right, and he makes the catch. But it was also a little different because Arenado, initially thinking the ball maybe would find the gap, uh, went about a third of the way, so there was no chance of him tagging up. On Tuesday, MLB returns to Fox Sports 1, the Twins, and Kansas City. Will battle. Coverage begins at 7:30 Eastern on Fox Sports One. Streams live on Fox Sports Go. Brad Penny is up. Here's LeMayhew. Kohler trying to get out of this inning. And he gets a letter high strike. And remember, last time up, we told you LeMahieu, who singled, is now six for seven in his career against Tom Kohler. Kansas City, by the way, enters play tonight with Detroit's loss earlier today. Three games up on the Tigers. And leading the Rangers 2-1 in the fifth in Texas right now. And Minnesota with a two-run lead against the Tigers in the second game. Goodness. For their doubleheader, 4-2 lead. What has happened with the Tigers? You know, it's interesting how you think about the trading deadline and the two teams that dominated the headlines on that July night. The Tigers and the Athletics, right? I mean, it was the Tigers that, that got David Price. It was the Athletics. They got John Lester after getting Samarja and Hamill. And Oakland's offense has struggled since Cespedes has left. And the Tigers, even with the price in the rotation, are struggling right now. And of course, uh, Oakland and Anaheim playing that big series up in Oakland. That's a scoreless ball game right now in the top of the second. Well, and, and Justin Verlander making his uh, first start in a while. Three innings has given up six hits and four runs. So he still appears not to be right. Oakland won the first game of that series last night, and they're a game back. Marlins will see a, a hot Angels team, a team that's won eight of ten. You know what you always worry about? A week or so ago, you were reading articles about Josh Hamilton. He sat out a couple of games. Trout was in a little bit of a, a down spell. Now, all of a sudden, both of those guys have. Uh, I swung the bat well the last two, three days. LeMahieu. 
But the Marlins, when you look at the rotation, you know, sometimes it works this way in your favor. Sometimes it doesn't. They will miss C.J. Wilson. They will miss Jared Weaver. And they will see Wade LeBlanc, of all people, who has uh, been called up. The Angels also considered calling up another guy from Triple A, Chris Volstead. But they settled on LeBlanc. Runners on the move, and LeMahieu sprays it foul. And also pitching in AAA with them, Randy Wolf. And catching those guys at, at times for the. Are they still the Bees what, or the, the Buzz? The Bees. Are they the Bees? Salt Lake City Bees. All right. I thought they used to be the Buzz. Anyways, John Buck. John Buck is there. How about that? To right, Stanton ventures towards the corner and he makes the catch, and the inning is over. And so Kohler gives up two hits to open the inning and then closes with three fly ball outs. And Jared Sotolakia talking it over. Rockies up by a run. Checkers brings you tomorrow's tilt. It's Brad Hand for the fish. Christian Bergman goes for the Rockies. And that's tomorrow, 2 30 start. Casey McGee getting ready to climb in. You know, you have to hope. That uh, Tom Kohler, with the way he was able to work out of that jam last inning, giving up a couple of hits, then three five ball outs, you would have to hope maybe that'll get him settled back in and able to give Mike Redman another uh, couple of innings. Maybe more. Uh, just for those of you that follow minor league baseball, to clarify, don't have to clarify. They were the bees. They still are the beast. They are. They were known as the buzz for a seven year period. That went into right field and a sliding catch there by Brandon Barnes. I think they wanted to play off the uh, the success of the the jazz. So they were the buzz for seven years. When was that? That must have been when you were there. Ninety four to two thousand. Yeah. Then what are they now? Well they're back to being the bees. They're the bees. But for one year. <laughs> Why are we doing this? Why are you doing this to me? Because I've got a. <laughs> I want to get you fired up. <laughs> and I want your opinion here because I think. If Denver had a minor league team or any place in Colorado. They should adopt that old name. They should borrow that name. The buzz. There's a, a bouncer to first knocked down. Well, let me Mordeaux. help you out. When Denver had a minor league team there were the Denver Bears. Understood. But now with the new law here. The buzz would be much much more appropriate. <laughs> Just think of the concession sales they would have at the ball. They'd have to get uh, approval for some of those. <laughs> yep. 
The worst part of the story is the reason they changed it from the buzz is Georgia Tech sued him <laughs> because the Georgia Tech mascot's name is Buzz. How did we get there? Don't know. Ozuna's up. And with two outs, Jordan Lyles misses. A single and a ground out. You know, the Marlins have had no shortage of base runners. They've stranded seven so far. They've had base runners every inning against Lyles. Every inning so far, except here in the fifth. There's a strike. Did you see that the Rays protested a game today? Joe Madden protested that. I did not. What was the call? That a replay. Review was held and that play had already resumed, and thus it was an illegal review. Play had happened, and pitcher was on the rubber, batter was in the box. And it, by rule, you're not supposed to be able to review after that. That's so, was it upheld? Well, they have to run it through the Giants first, apparently. <laughs> No, it's uh, I mean they just protested it today. So Major League Baseball will I guess will look at it. But Bob Davidson was the uh, umpire in question. What a shot. By the way that's the fifth walk issued by Jordan Lyles. Salta Lamacchia rips it left field bad angle by Dickerson it goes over his head racing for third is Ozuna they will send him Marcel Ozuna wow rip it around third scores with a slide and Salta Lamacchia ties this game Corey Dickerson's route on that ball initially was to start in and to the right and once that happened it was game on for Ozuna Boy, we've seen uh, Jared Salta Lamaki really get locked in with some nice swings. Six game hitting streak. He takes this ball the other way. Beautifully done. And then, what did A.J. Ramos say? Uh, call Marcelo Zuna. Twinkle toes. Twinkle toes coming around the bag, being waved home by Brett Butler. Just like that, a tie game. Here is Echeverria with Salta Lamaki out at second base. Believe it or not, of all the walks, the five walks, that's the first one that's scored in this one. You got Kohler on deck. You got first base open. And the count's 1-0. and oh. And when Lyles has tried to be careful and pitch around guys, he's not been real successful at it. You and I before the game were talking about Salt de Lamacchia with the way he's been swinging the bat, how uh, it just enhances the, the offense so much because it extends the, the lineup. It gives you a little depth. Little tapper to the left, and Arenado kicks it. Everybody's safe. Salt Lamacchia at third, and Chavri at first. And Kohler comes up now with two outs. E5. Well, that's uh, something you don't see a whole lot. Rockies fans are used to seeing the Gold Glover make all those plays, but 13 errors for Arenado. Well, and Kohler gets some swings here. Kohler struck out. Sacrifice bunt back in the fourth. And he hits a roller up the middle. Culberson gets the out. Inning over, but Miami draws even on a two-out double by Jared Saltalamaki and the slick wheels of Marcelo Zuna.
scoring from first as Tommy Hutton reminded us. Remember what A.J. Ramos said when reading the lineups tonight. Batting sixth is Mighty Sale. Twinkle toes around first base Ozuna. Seriously, watch him when he rounds first base. He has those twinkle toes. Batting seventh. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> I, I think even rounding second and third, too. Good work in the truck. <laughs> Tell you what, he, he has uh, he scored all the way. He's uh, covered a lot of territory tonight at center field, which which you always do if you play center field here. So he's gotten his work in already halfway through this game. I think you put it best at the outset when talking about starting pitchers. It's survival mode here. It's not hey come out and dominate. It's just weather the storm. Hope your team puts six or seven runs up. And that you're around long enough and you can hold them under uh, five runs or so. Yeah, I talked a little bit with uh, Chuck Hernandez about that. We were talking about uh, Henderson's uh, outing last night, and he kind of used that term. He said, well, he survived. And, and, and that's what you have to do. If you're a, a starting pitcher and you pitch here, you've got to say, okay, my offense is going to score me some runs. So let me survive. If I give up a few, that's okay. And all of a sudden, in survival mode is uh, Tom Kohler and he finds himself in a 3-3 game. Well and out here in the fifth top of the order Charlie Blackman. Brandon Barnes. Blackman his walk up song the outfield I just want to use your love tonight or I don't want to lose your love tonight I think it works both ways I don't want to lose your fly ball tonight too no I don't want to lose this game tonight well it's worked for Charlie Blackman this year that's for sure Sound like he busted his bat, and that's going to flare in the center field for a hit. So Blackman two for three. If your child has a birthday coming up, you can celebrate it with a Marlin sea creature. That's if Tommy Hutton's not available. You're on the Marlins from a private field level party area, and your child will be the honorary starter for the great sea race. Enjoy a visit from the sea creatures, an inclusive food package, maybe even some sushi. Book your party now. Go to Marlins.com. No, no sushi at the uh, sea creatures uh, party. Or at Billy's, for that matter. Well, he's 21 now. Hey, be careful with Blackman. We've talked about uh, his speed. He has 22 stolen bases. Yeah, Billy's legal. How about that? He is. Next time. We see a shot of Billy at a Marlins watch party. He'll be flat on his back with his bill straight up. <laughs> <laughs> so that means uh, Billy can go out to the Clevelander now, too. <laughs> That's a whole new <laughs> dynamic of the Clevelander. Because there's a pool out there. Runner goes. Good jump. Sotomaki's throw. Got him on the bag. Blackman didn't like the call. This one might be reviewed. What why he starts the long slow stroll to start the I process. I tell you what though, Blackman's not hanging around. He he's not hanging around like we see a player do when he thinks that he was actually in there. I think he got him. A strong throw by Salta Lamacchia. Solano with a good sweep tag. There it is. You know sometimes in it. When a player slides feet first, that front foot doesn't extend and it either gets caught or it goes above the bag. Let's see where the front foot it gets or caught. Pop, huh? It gets caught, he slowed up. It slowed him up a little bit. Yep. 
and a, and a perfect throw by Salta Lamacchia. That's a, the frustrating thing in watching Salty this year. He's made a lot of errors on throws that he's left up, and they sail, they tail on him. When he gets squared up, he's got a strong arm, and I think you saw it there on that throw. Yeah, it was a, a great jump, as we said. Blackman was out, out of the shoot and running, and it looked like he had the bag stolen. So a good night for Salta Lamacchia. Good inning for Salta Lamacchia. The top of the fifth and the bottom of the fifth. Count one and two. You realize for Tom Kohler in this game, he has no strikeouts and no walks. Well, I think the walks is the most important that's, thing. That's a key. Because if he had walked two or three guys, it wouldn't be 3-3. Three, three, it'd be 6-3. Mm -hmm. And he got him. And he strikes out Barnes. There's your strikeout. And that finishes the fifth. Everybody's happy. If you weren't with us to begin the night, Dad with his two sons, the uh, son with the Rockies hat is a big baseball fan. The son with the Marlins hat is a Marlin fan. But his main sport, Dad says, was basketball. And watch Daddy makes the catch and look, he gives the ball to that son, and the son in the middle was left out, and he was sad. Allison Williams. We talked it over. A Dub not only got a baseball, but got Henderson Alvarez to sign the ball. And Allison presented it to the boy. And everything was okay. Who, by the way, was very appreciative and polite. Yes. Uh, with his thank yous. And so dad's done a good job there. Oh, and you know, the look on dad's face was thank God for Allison Williams. <laughs> because I think dad would have had a hard time. Living that one down on the way home and for the next couple of weeks. And maybe explaining it to mom. Yeah, and maybe like 20 years from now. You know, like it's <laughs> at some wedding that a fist fight breaks out over that night in Denver when dad gave the foul ball to uh, one son and not the other. So they both have balls. They, they both have, one's got the autograph ball, a Henderson Alvarez autograph ball. The young son with the Rockies hat just has a, a regular ball. Christian Yelich, Donovan Solano, and John Carlos Stan. Top of the order for the fish, Yelich, who was hit by a pitch and then scored in the third, almost took that one. Yelich has been on twice. Pulls a ground ball. The Mayhew backing up on it gets the out. First out of the sixth.
Yeah, we talked about Lyles being in the Astros organization, first round pick at the Astros in 08. He was their minor league pitcher of the year back in 2010. Solano out to short. Culberson comes to get it and gets the out. And there are two outs. Here comes Giancarlo Stanton. America's new sports network, the place of term for every slam, every goal, every game with America's free game only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune into America's free game weeknights, 6 Eastern. Only on Fox Sports 1. To find Fox Sports 1 on your cable and satellite provider, go to FoxSports1.com. Stan tonight has walked. There's Rex Brothers in the bullpen. RBI double for Stant was a bloop shot to right and then he struck out with the bags loaded and two outs to finish the fourth. <laughs> Up the middle Stanton got another hit. Nice series. He is five for seven in the series. That's going to take his uh, average back over 300 as well. 301 for John Carlin. Notice your start time tomorrow. It's a 3:30 start for Marlins Live. Four o'clock. Remind me of that when we walk back to the hotel tonight. All right. Well, this is Mountain Time Zone, so it's a, a two o'clock start here tomorrow. But we've got to be ready by 1.30 for Marlins Live. Stan is running. McGee is hitting, and he drives it into left field. Stanton's not stopping. On his way to third, a quick throw there, and he's in. Throw back across the diamond. Wow. The Rockies uh, boldly throwing it all over the place. Miami ends up with runners at the corners. And here comes Garrett Jones. Second time in a row that Casey's gotten that first pitch breaking ball. He did not do much with it before. It might have been a fastball up, but it was in. He pulled the trigger. Stanton was trying to steal, get into scoring position, never hesitated. The play was in front of him. He saw where the left fielder Dickerson was playing and was able to get third. Rex Brothers coming out of the bullpen. You've got Jones, the hitter, and Walt Weiss doesn't want him to see the right hander Lyles again. West Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen in a 3 3 game in Denver.
inspired uh, the settlers, right? I mean, the Rocky Mountains, a, a great sunset, Coors beer up there somewhere. Let me tell you the line that I've heard for years, skiing brings people to Colorado, but the summertime keeps people in Colorado. Well, it, it did not keep Jordan Lyles in this ball game. No, it didn't. Because Garrett Jones, a lefty bat who has eaten Lyles alive in his career and has hit well in this ballpark, is going to have to face Rex Brothers. Marcelo Zuna's on deck at the corners. Two outs. Brothers primarily fastball slider. We've seen Garrett Jones improve a little bit. The average against lefty still a little above 200, but he's uh, had some good swings. And this is a place where he's always hit well. So you got to factor that into it as well. And I think Brothers is just in for Jones. Popped up behind the plate. McHenry, and it's out of reach. It's six rows in. Ooh, ooh. I hope that fan is okay. There is Nicasio. And yeah, the fan is okay. So that fan we saw tumble over the seats after the baseball. Jones checks his swing. No swing. And the counts two and one. Yeah, the Rockies hurrying to get Nicasio ready because Ozuna's on deck and they don't want brothers facing Ozuna. There's that 95 mile an hour fastball. Yeah, pretty live fastball. And again, with Garrett Jones with the salty pitchers try to work that fastball up in the zone. And he got him. McHenry digs it out, throws him out. And the Marlins are done. They leave two in the sixth. 3 3 game here in Colorado. In Denver, shot of the uh, rooftop, the new addition up there in right field, along with Tommy Hutton, Allison Williams, Rich Waltz with you. 72 degrees, gorgeous here as uh, night falls in the Rocky Mountains. A high, high pop up off the bat of Justin Morneau. And Danny Echevarria makes the catch. Morneau is 0 for 3, came in 
leading the National League in hitting. But an 0 for 3 has dropped his average down to 317. Another nice crowd on hand. They had a little over 30,000 last night. You know, if you're the Marlins too, Rich, tonight, you have to feel good about being in a 3 3 tie when you've gone 1 for 10 with runners in scoring position and you've stranded 11. Well, Tom Kohler, I think both Kohler and maybe to a greater extent Lyles with all the stranded runners feel pretty fortunate to be in a 3 3 game right now. Lyles is gone, five and two thirds. Kohler has worked five and a third after getting the more no out. Arenado singled in the fourth, and you got Corey Dickerson behind him, who's two for two. Well, the Rockies did all their damage in the third inning. They've only left two runners on base. A strike, and it's two and one. And the pitch count for TK still pretty manageable right now. Well, it was last night in Cincinnati that uh, Mike Miner flirted with a no hitter. The Reds having trouble scoring runs. That game is in the fifth inning tonight. It's a scoreless game, and the Reds and the Braves both have only one hit. The return of Brandon Phillips has not uh, pumped up that offense. Votto still out as well. McGee fires across. Arenado's out number two. And Corey Dickerson is coming up. Cardinals and Phillies 5-5 five, five in the bottom of the eighth. If you're just happening by here, it's 3-3. Three, three, Marlins and Rockies. What's at stake for the fish? Well, right now, a, a, another half game in the wild card. Actually, if they win it, it's a full game. They open four back of the second wild card team, the Giants. San Francisco has lost 6-2 to two to Washington. So if Mike Redmond's ball club can win this game. They'll be three back of the wild card and two over 500. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to look at it. It, it would take the club uh, two games over 500. It would get the road trip certainly off to a nice start. The other teams in the middle there, we told you about Atlanta scoreless with Cincinnati. Pittsburgh is absolutely clobbering Milwaukee 10 to 2. And that's top eight, and that's in Milwaukee. And if that continues, if Milwaukee continues to get knocked around, they've lost two in a row. Pretty soon we'll be talking about Milwaukee in a wild card spot. St. Louis, a game and a half behind the Brewers when play started. And of course, St. Louis tied with the Phillies in the ninth, 5 5. You know, Milwaukee has played so well all year. They've won six of their last 10, but they just can't shake the Cardinals. And they haven't put on that big run. The Cardinals have played a little bit better. Tom Kohler. Well, how about a strong one, two, three, sixth inning? Marcelo Zuna. Grand slam last night leads it off for the fish in a 3 3 game.
It's the seventh, a mile high, Coors Field in Denver. Let's go down to Allison Williams. Hey, Dub. Hey there, Rich. Marcelo Zuna getting ready to lead things off here for the Fish, and he is a part of that trio of outfielders that have been really terrific for the Marlins this year, both defensively. They cover a lot of ground. They have good arms, but also offensively. Look at their ranks in Major League Baseball combined. They are tops in nearly every statistical category. Also in war, they're second best in the majors. Home runs, they're second. Second only to the Rockies outfield. RBI, their first. Average fourth on base percentage. Uh, slug percentage you keep going down the list walks first as well so really really terrific numbers being put up by the Marlins outfield and I talked to manager Mike Redman about it earlier today and he loves this group first of all they're very young I mean John Carlos Stanton is a uh, is the old wise man out there at 24 years old and he said they're continuing to learn they're continuing to develop and he noted that while they may not get a lot of attention nationally throughout the baseball community he said when we go into ballparks and take on opposing teams they know how good those three are in the outfield. Yeah, you're right. And they certainly don't lead in age. It's well, yeah, with 22, me. 23, and 24. <laughs> That's exactly right. From left to right. Juan Nicasio takes so, over. So the other on that list of all the rankings, we could also put uh, lowest in age, average age. Ozuna, Saltalamacchia, Echeverria. Seventh inning. Ozuna after a high fastball. And fouls it off. And as we've talked about, that young outfield goes about their business. They they do it on the field. You hear about some of these other outfielders, young outfielders, because of other stuff, not necessarily what they've done on the field. Pitches out. We had that conversation. Good young outfield with Pittsburgh, Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco. But uh, not, not in the rankings with the Marlins young outfield. Ozuna you know, has driven in 70 runs. Last year, Giancarlo Stanton led the Marlins with what, 62? 62. <laughs> I mean, what a difference this year makes. Stanton has driven in his 93rd run of the season tonight. Ozuna has 70. He drove in five last night. You got Casey McGee, who's knocked in 61. That ball has some carry to it, and Blackman chased all the way back to the. That looked like a shallow pop fly and he went to the warning track. Yeah. <laughs> Middle of the warning track. Marlins baseball is better when you share it with your friend. You can do it through social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or visit the on cloud Conine blog for an offbeat look at the fish. Go to Marlins.com slash connect full roster of Marlins players on Twitter. Tell you what, though, the uh, flags after after we saw that fly ball really carry, you look at the uh, flags up on the uh, scoreboard above the scoreboard, really blowing hard out to right center. So I'm sure it had an effect on that fly ball. That's from an angle shooting from first base. So that doesn't give you a. A real clean look. Is that the rock pile out there? Straight away center? Yes. That's a long ways away, man. I mean, it's 415 to straight away center. And it's all for Machia swings and misses. But well, remember, we saw Nicasio warming up. So you're right, Brothers was just in to face Garrett Jones. That strike three called. Casio finished things off for the Rockies last night, but it was Nicasio who gave up that grand slam. Two of the runs were charged to him. The grand slam to Ozuna.
Echeverria. Infield hit, line drive out, reached on an error. Braves and Red still scoreless, bottom five, Cincinnati. Oakland has the first run in that big series uh, game two against the Angels. Athletics won last night. One nothing right now. Bottom of the fourth in Oakland. So when the Marlins face the Angels on Monday night they will have been on the road a long time and that will be the uh, opener of a long homestand in the course of three game series with the fish. Good matchup in that game in Oakland. Uh, C.J. Wilson and John Lester. Oakland won 5-3 last night. Tell you a team that has crept up on Oakland. They're still six back. Seattle, who won again today and beat Boston at Fenway seven to three. How about their win last night? Seattle. It's the second time they've been down. With two outs in the ninth and scored. Is it five runs? Five runs. Second time they've done that this year. Echeverria, an easy swing and a liner to center. And a 1 2 3 inning for Juan Nicasio. Seventh inning stretch in a 3 3 game. Here in Colorado, this is the traditional seventh inning stretch song here. Will you be the AT&T fan photo? Rosaline. Oh, it's Park at the Park night. Look at that. Very nice. Well, Tom Kohler back out there for the seventh inning. Very good through six. That one blip. Three runs for the uh, Rockies in the third inning. Two of them coming on a two run homer by Brandon Barnes. Michael McHenry. Charlie Culberson. DJ LeMayhew.
And McKendry swings and misses. Rockies box score. Uh, the big hit, Brandon Barnes, two run homer in the third. Over the last couple of innings, Tom Kohler's breaking ball has been much better. Like that, that. And a sharp one and a good one. And McHenry goes down. Toyota Trent. Longest home games in the National League. The Rockies check in at 312. Where are the Marlins on that list, if if I may ask? Those are the top five. Where would the Marlins rank in the National League? Rob Manfred, the commissioner elect, has said. In fact, one of the first things that he said was a pace of game. He wants it improved. Well, there there are some things that can be done, but I still think in this day and age, with the way the game is played and managed, managed with bullpens, it's still hard to have games as short as they were, let's say, back in the 70s. You had a lot of complete games. You had one reliever coming in, but when you use four and five guys out of a bullpen, games are going to be a little longer. But I think there are things that can be done to shorten that a little bit. A lot of people have and we were actually uh, talking about this three months ago when we read the initial article about the independent league that is has experimented with uh, a lot of rules and some of the rules we liked some were you know might be tough to enforce is you know it, it it's uh, I like the one about the reliever coming in and throwing one or two fewer pitches that speeds it up I like the hitter to stay in the batter's box maybe take one foot out. Uh, I don't know. I know a lot of people say just do this, but think about it. If, if you're going to walk a guy intentionally, just put him on first. But think about what we've seen a couple of times. We saw a big, big base hit in Baltimore by Miguel Cabrera. We saw the Marlins lose a game when Steve Ciszek threw a wild pitch in Seattle on an intentional yes. walk attempt. So I, I don't think I would want to see that changed. I like the one where you limit the amount of times. A catcher can go out and talk to the pitcher mm -hmm. or the amount of times that an infield can come in and talk even coaches throw to first in time. Yeah, I don't want to see you know it's almost like OK if you don't have a guy ready in your bullpen then that's your fault that's on you. Don't send your pitching coach out there to walk as slow as a turtle to stand out there and talk nonsense just to stall. Oh, How many times have we seen a manager give the little you know. He, yeah. Flips his hand back and forth as if, hey, go out and talk go to him. Talk to him. Buy me a minute, and then I can walk out real slow. I uh, mean, it's going to make managers a little more on their toes, and it's probably going to make guys in the bullpen throw a little bit more. I'm okay with that. Tom Kohler's retired 10 of the last 11. The one that reached base was a single by Blackman, and he was thrown out by Salta Lamaki. You got LeMahieu in the eighth spot. I think that the pitchers that work quickly are, are most of them are starters and it's usually with nobody on base. There are some starters that when guys get on base all of a sudden they really slow down. And I think we we probably see more relievers slow down the pace than starters. Maybe that's because relievers come in with guys on base. Yeah. And, and don't have an opportunity a relief pitcher doesn't have an opportunity to get in a groove. See like this sequence where. LeMay who steps out adjusts the batting gloves and then comes back in Kohler's been waiting. I know it's only a matter of what 12 15 seconds but you uh, didn't matter he stepped out and look what happened he yeah. still struck out fastball good up. job Tom Kohler seven innings for Tom Kohler and this ball game is still tied 3 3.
That's just terrific. You talk about uh, saving your bullpen, keeping your team in the ball game. Kohler has done that. The Rockies have been in their bullpen the last two innings. MLB.TV Premium, number one live streaming sports service. Celebrating 12 years, millions of subscribers. MLB.TV Premium includes free at bat 14 subscription. Allows you to watch live baseball on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Go to Marlins.com. How about Tom Kohler has had two starts here at Coors Field. Each of those starts he's gone seven innings. In this one tonight he gave up the eight hits and three runs in, in a start last year here at Coors Field. He gave up eight hits and one run and in each of those starts he did not walk a batter. So he did his job pitching in this ballpark. Jordani Valdez being announced as the pinch hitter. Walt Weiss strolls out to the mound. And he will make a pitching change. And so Nicasio was out for show more than go. West Kendall called to the bullpen. But now this is this is exactly what we were talking about in speeding up the game. Now I know there's some strategy here. The Marlins announced Jordan Danny Valdez speed as a pinch hitter. Nicasio had warmed up. Walt Weiss waited until he came to the plate and was announced. Then Weiss walked out to the mound, changed pitchers. Logan comes well, what in. What he was waiting for, he was waiting to see if a left-hander was going to be announced. Simple solution. Okay. Innings over. If the Marlins are going to pinch hit or any team is going to pinch hit to open up the inning, you have to tell the home plate umpire, hey, I'm going to hit Valdespin here. The Marlins knew they were going to hit Valdespin. Once he's announced, the umpire looks into the Rockies dugout and says, hey, Valdespin is hitting. You going to change pitchers or not? And Walt Weiss has to say yes or no. If he says no, then Nicasio throws his warm ups and away they go. If he says yes, then you don't have Nicasio stand out there and throw eight warm up pitches. For two minutes, and then have, and then have Weiss walk out there. We well, still have to have Weiss walk out there. This could be a base hit. Now the speed is across and in time because Weiss has to take the ball and give it to the new pitcher coming in. But I I understand your point and I see where that would speed things up. By the way, great way to start things. Didn't matter if they brought in a lefty. Valdez Bean dropped down a beautiful bunt. Yeah, that's speeding up the game right there. Valdez Bean, a perfect bunt. He's at first, and now you got the top of the order up. Logan facing the lefty Yelich. And again, we'll see in this inning why games are longer because you know that Boone Logan isn't going to face Giancarlo Stanton. He might not even face Donovan Solano. Palmetto 57 Nissan leaderboard. 
Leadoff hitters on base percentage. Only Matt Carpenter has a better on base percentage than Christian Yelich. Josh Harrison right behind him. Boy, that's some good company, and he's done a terrific job. Helped himself tonight. He's been on base a couple of times. Trying to extend that hitting streak, though. Brian Morris in Miami's bullpen. Nope. Boone Logan may be out there for a while because right now there there is no activity in that uh, Rockies bullpen. One one to Yelich. It's in. Now if he is, then you could get Solano and Stanton some ABs against the lefty. There's the lonely Rockies bullpen, which is a really a, a nature's lover it's preserve. It's beautiful out there. It is. It's a. Uh, you've got the. Uh, the evergreen trees out there. There's a stream. Just beyond the wall. I don't know if it's stocked with fish or not. Exmo squirrel makes his home out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah look at that. Might be some trout. In there. I don't think the angels play here interleague. <laughs> Just been looking around the mound at Brett Butler for a sign. And Yelich cuts on it and misses. You don't see, and it's one of the reasons Christian Yelich hits left handers so well. You don't see him chase too many pitches such as that one. He usually is so patient that he's hitting at strikes. Most left handers have struggles against lefty pitchers because they'll chase a lot of pitches out of the zone. Logan's splits are interesting against righties. Batting average 291. Lefties are hitting 310 against him. But not Yelich. A couple of good sliders. And so that Logan gets the out. Valdez being still at first. Yeah, those are interesting. Walt Weiss uh, approaching. And Weiss is going to make a change. Well, he's got Josh Rutledge. And he, you know there. what? He had someone already warmed up. We showed the bullpen where no one was throwing. Someone had actually warmed up already and was ready to come in. So there's a right hander coming out of the Rockies pen. Ottavino. Adam Ottavino. Well, there you have it. West Kendall Toyota call to the bullpen.
Uh, we resume this uh, previously started inning now with Charlie Culberson over at second base. Well, he's moved from shortstop to second. Josh Rutledge has come out of the dugout and occupies short. DJ LeMahieu has gone into the dugout, and Adam Ottavino, who possesses a really good slider, is on the mound. 62 relief appearances for Ottavino. Solano's up. Now the spins at first. And in our discussion about speeding up the game, Tommy Hutton pointed out the biggest drag is the constant changing of pitchers. Well, we're seeing it right here. There have been three pitchers on the mound in this inning. And so far, one out has been recorded. And this is the third hitter. There's that big sweeping slider. Look. Yeah, I don't think that's going to change and until that changes. You're still going to have lengthy games. They might be a little quicker. Bases loaded walk for an RBI for Solano tonight. Out of Vino. Kind of a mechanical move over to first. There's Valdespin's career numbers. Stands on deck. And there is said slider. And notice the uh, the pace at which Ottavino works. He's thinking maybe a, a stolen base attempt or a hit and run spot. Either way, they pitch out. Yeah, the two strikes on Solano, so you wouldn't hit and run, but for some reason, Walt Weiss wanted to pitch out. Stays at one and two. This is the fifth pitcher to work for the Rockies. Mike Redmond has used one, and that's seven innings worth of Tom Kohler. Well, Walt Weiss used five pitchers out of his bullpen last night, so six pitchers, including his starter. And it'll be interesting to see the residual effect of both last night and tonight. Tomorrow. In the game three, the Rockies pen working a lot. Miami's bullpen. Remember, got six innings out of Alvarez last night. Ramos, Morris, and Dyson, an inning each. Yeah, Brad Penny was actually up in the third inning when the Rockies scored their three runs off. Tom Kohler, but uh, Tom settled down. And then last night, until the Marlins opened it up, we saw Steve Ciszek starting to get loose. He hadn't thrown a lot of pitches. Solano fights the slider off. It's two and two. Reds had the first run against the Braves. One nothing in the seventh. Cardinals and Phillies are into the tenth five five. And that pirate bludgeoning of the Brewers is over ten two Pittsburgh. And so it's an important uh, score for the Cardinals who have a chance with a win tonight. To be a half game out of first place. 
Solano pokes it. Foul. If you missed it, the Nationals beat the Giants 6 to 2. So if the Marlins win this game, they are three back of the wild card. By the way, I do have my stopwatch on Ottavino. Took him 20 seconds from the time he got the ball to throw that last pitch. He's had the ball now 12 seconds. And he hasn't even looked in to get the sign. We're 22 seconds now. He still hasn't thrown a pitch. Almost 30 seconds from the time he got the ball to when he threw it. We'll do it again. Well, and that's one of the rules that they've talked about. They don't enforce it, though. Understood. You want to speed up games, enforce it. And that's what we're at 12 seconds now. He still hasn't even gotten the sign. And that's what Rob Manfred talked about. Is All right. I hope he's rule. watching the game. <laughs> two, two. 26 seconds to throw that pitch. I've, I've made my case. Oh, absolutely. I'm putting the stopwatch away. Amen. And that's one of the rules in that independent league that they did enforce. Stan's been <laughs> Stan has been a statue just waiting on deck for the last 15 minutes. It feels like. Uh, I finished him with a slider. And here comes Stanton now. AT&T U-verse rewind. Longest of his career, 494 feet. That was in 2012. Fastball at cold strike. 99 miles an hour. Got the slider and fouls it back. This feels like that was just a protect mode swing there. This feels like the baseball equivalent of the four corners offense. <laughs> right? I mean, three different pitchers for four different hitters. Adovino buries a breaking ball. It's one and two. I'm at a loss. Runner goes, swing and a miss. Stanton strikes out. And Ottavino gets Giancarlo and finishes a protracted eighth. 3 3.
this had all the looks of, of not a 3 3 game, but like a 7 6 8 7 type game. Brian Morrison. Rockies got all of their runs in the third. Marlins single runs in the third, fourth, and fifth. And so Tom Kohler, seven innings of solid work, gives up the three runs. Rockies on that double switch with uh, Josh Rutledge in the nine spot to so the pitcher spot. He is hitting eighth for the Rockies. So it's Rutledge, Blackman, and Barnes. Here's the 1 0. Bouncer, Etch, got his glove on it. And it's a base hit. Watch what this ball does up the middle. There's that little hop that comes up on Etch. I think he's thinking in his own mind if that ball takes the hop, he's expecting as he takes that dive, he might make the play, but it. Infield base hit for Rutledge. Mike Dunn in Miami's bullpen. So Rutledge is aboard. You got Blackman, Barnes, and then Morneau. Rutledge has a couple stolen bases. So Lamaki has thrown out a runner tonight. Blackman bunts third base side. He's got wheels and he's out not by much <laughs> but he's out. Well he does get up that line in a hurry drop down a beautiful bunt. There's a, an example of even showing sacrifice bunt by making it a good bunt. He still almost beat that out. So now Morris faces Barnes. Morris has been terrific since coming over from the Pirates. Barnes tonight, the two run homer, back in the three run third for the Rockies. End of the bat, Jones captures it and steps on the bag. All right, you got more note coming up. And he's 0 for 3. And then after him, you have Arenado. Arenado has a base hit tonight. He had four hits last night. That's one thing you, you do as a manager, and Red does that a lot with uh, Rob Leary. He bounces things off, uh, suggestions, and they go back and forth. And it's going to be a straight up change done coming in to face Morneau in a 3 3 game in Colorado. Miami makes a pitching change. Morris gets a couple outs. Wes Kendall, Toyota. Get their money's worth tonight.
The Rockies have a go ahead run. Just 90 feet away. There are two outs. Mike Dunn becomes the second out of Miami's bullpen. And he'll be facing Justin Morneau, who was 0 for 3. When the night started, Morneau was leading the National League in hitting. I know that's surprising. It surprised us with the. An average of, of 319 to start the night. For the Marlins, here's what's uh, in the balance tonight. With San Francisco losing, Miami is three and a half back. If they win the game, they're three back. If they lose, they're back where they started. And that's four back. Morneau takes a breaking ball outside. This is where, Rich, it's a must for Mike Dunn to get Morneau because he doesn't now he has to go against the right hander Arenado and the, the object of this is to get the, the matchup in your favor the lefty lefty matchup. Morneau homered last night he had gone 130 at bats without a home run. But he hit 346 in that stretch. But he had just eight doubles and no homers. Pops it up and it's back and it's out of play. Well he can rest uh, a little easy because Ben Revere who is four points behind him is 0 for 4 tonight for the Phillies. Well Dunn has a strike and it's 2 and 1. Got a strike there. Morneau couldn't hold up. Two and two. Well, you can see when they have Kadair in the lineup and Morneau and Arenado swinging the bat the way he is Blackman, the kind of year he's having. Flying shot. Solano snares it. Morneau put a charge in it. And it's still 3 3. Marlins and Rockies get to the ninth in Denver in a 3 3 game. Marlins and Rockies. Checkers brings you Marlins live. Our postgame offering. 
And that's immediately following the completion of this uh, Major League Baseball game. Craig Minervini, Carl Pavano. Casey McGee in Japan, part one, an encore presentation. Part two will be tomorrow. Marlins live pregame, three o'clock start, or excuse me, a 3.30 start. How about Latroy Hawkins at 41 years old, still going strong, still working out of the bullpen. He's the Rockies' closer. So they're using him in this uh, tie situation in the ninth inning. You know, primarily cutters, sliders, fastball. He's done it for a long time. Look at that 20th year in the major leagues. And first pitch, 93 miles an hour. He's creeping up on a thousand games. McGee, a tapper, back to Hawkins. He gets the out. That's a lot of years for Hawkins early in his career, a starting pitcher. With the Minnesota Twins. Garrett Jones in this ball game is one for four. Big shift for him. And that's exactly where the Rockies have pitched him the first uh, two nights. He did uh, get an appearance last night, walked. It's always a little, I always thought, a little disconcerting for the hitter when that shortstop in a shift is directly behind second base. So Rutledge is back there. You know, you, you, you're obviously you're focusing on the release point, on the pitcher, but. You know he's out there. Two for six against Latroy Hawkins. Talked about Garrett Jones, four career home runs here. An average right around 390. Oof. Looks like a pretty good pitch. And that was in and Pitch two was called a strike. That was in as well. That's where they've worked him. They've worked Jones on that inner part of the plate. There's that hard cutter there. Team Cishek up. Cishek up in case the Marlins get a run here. Jones was after a low fastball. Not too much that Latroy Hawkins throws is straight. Everything he throws has some movement. Ozuna was one for three. Six game streak extended with a base hit in the second. He'd like to extend his streak of homering. He's homered in three consecutive games. On a strike. He can still get it up there, and, and that's that's what's amazing in his 40s. He's got that fluid, loose arm delivery. 
96 on that last fastball. Up the middle, a base hit. Ozuna's second of the ball game. There's a little something that Latroy Hawkins does, and a, a heads up on Marcelo Ozuna's part. Sometimes he'll he'll come set. He's in the stress position. Sometimes he holds it. Now this time, watch. He just comes up almost like in a windup. Yeah, that left foot comes yeah. up, and. Heads up on Ozuna's part because he was able to pick that up and shot the base hit right back up the middle. Now obviously with a man on base you can't do that. Salta Lamakia. Hawkins misses. Salta Lamakia. RBI double has walked and scored and struck out twice. The Giants losing today. Good news for the Marlins. If Miami can win it, they're within three in the wild card. And it's good news for the Dodgers, too. Dodgers have a 5 4 lead over the Mets in the top of the seventh. Dodgers a, a three and a half game lead to start with. So if they can uh, hold off the Mets down at uh, Chavez Ravine, they'll have a four and a half game lead. Into right center field, base hit. Ozuna racing for third, and he's going to get there. Jared Zotelmachia really in a nice groove, swinging the bat well. Two hits tonight. Echeverria comes up at the corners, and two outs. Watch how he shortens things up, and this is why he's gotten locked in. Really gets down on that pitch that was down and in. And that's a pitch a lot of times he'll swing around, swing over it if his swing gets a little long. But he's in a real nice groove lately. With his base hit back in the fifth, the six game hitting streak for Salty. So Echeverria, who is one for four, Miami trying to get a run across and take the lead with two outs in the ninth. Hawkins misses down low. Now field playing Echeverria at a right center. He's lined out to center twice. He's actually had some decent swings tonight. And if Hawkins stays away, the way Etch has swung the bat all year, you may see one of those line drives between first and second. Reed Johnson will be the pinch hitter. Late on that one, lines it foul. And it's two and one. Look at that. One for ten, the Marlins. One for seven, the Rockies. And it's been three three since the midway point of this ball game. But the Marlins have left. 12 on base, the Rockies just three. A 
And now Hawkins has his second strike and it evens the count at two and two. And that's foul. He's shooting for that area, though, isn't he? He is, and the defense is tilted that way. The whole table is tilted that way. Etch is going there. The defense is playing there. Hawkins is pitching him there. I mean, if, if he pulls a ball down the left field line, it's going to fool everybody. Everybody, the whole world will stop spinning on its axis. And Hawkins really doesn't use like a slow curveball or anything like that. It's either the, the cutter or the slider. Another 2-2. Two -two. Off of Hawkins' glove, rebounds to short, and the Marlins have the lead. Ozuna scores. Echeverria with an RBI hit. Hawkins tried to get a glove on it and he deflected it up in the air. Rutledge couldn't handle it. Well, first of all, that was just a great AB by Danny Echeverria. And then how about the way this inning has unfolded? Hawkins got a couple of quick outs. The Marlins have put together three consecutive singles to take the lead. Keep in mind, we've talked about all the walk off wins. You can't walk off when you're on the road. But the Marlins also have 21 wins in their last at bat as well. Look at Ozuna. He's fired up. Now, as soon as that ball stopped spinning, Jeff Baker popped up into the on-deck circle and Reed Johnson came back into the dugout. Johnson was not announced. Baker will take the at bat. And he hits here against Hawkins. Saltalamak hits second. Echeverry at first. Now we talked about Bakes job last night. Three hits, couple of doubles. Been a tremendous pinch hitter for Mike Redmond. Nick Massett in the Rockies bullpen. The Rockies brought their closer in to pitch the top of the ninth in a 3 3 game, and the Marlins have a run against him. It's one of the things when you are involved in so many one run games and walk off wins and last at bat wins, you get to this point, you feel okay. The Marlins have been in this situation so many times. Rockies will have Arenado, Dickerson, and McHenry scheduled. Look at that. 32 one run wins. Baker would like to make this more than a one run game. So the Marlins with 64 wins, half of them have been one run games, one run wins. And if things hold up, the pitcher of record, Mike Dunn. That's right. Baker fights off a nasty pitch. Mike Dunn has been the winningest reliever on the planet <laughs> this year. If Seashack getting ready. I told you, Arenado, Dickerson, McHenry. Done at 10 and 5, could go to 11 and 5. There's a long way to go there. This is Coors Field. Oh, 2. 
Strike three call. Down goes Baker. But the Marlins get a run. They scratch it out with three consecutive hits. A Danny Echeverria. Off the glove of Hawkins. And now Cishek comes in to look for a save. Officially late night with a fish. 4-3, Marlins on top, going to the bottom of the ninth. Our friends from earlier, in case you missed it. Foul ball, Dad got it, gave it to the son, wearing the Rockies hat. What? What? And the son with the Marlins cap. Ugh. So we here at Fox Sports Florida wanted to make it right. Allison Williams approaching Henderson. Now look at the kid's face. Henderson Alvarez autographed the ball. Allison Williams took the baseball and presented it to the youngster. Look at that. <laughs> and he's been smiling since. A great Gulf, night. Gulfstream Park game summary. Dad took a picture and everything. Gotta like it. And yeah. if Steve Ciszek nails this one down. He'll go home a winner too. Oh, he can glow. And he'll never forget this night, by the way. He can taunt his dad and his brother all the way home. <laughs> but getting saves in this ballpark has never been easy. Not just for a Marlins closer, but for any closer. The Rockies have a history of coming back and walking off and all the late inning heroics. Cishek, first pitch. And that would be strike one to Nolan Arenado. <laughs> Arenado singled back in the fourth. He was four for four last night. And he chops one over the middle. Echeverria hops to it and gets the out. One out in the ninth. Always a good start to get that first out. There are only four more pitchers, four other pitchers, I should say, in the league with more saves than Cishek. And there you go. As soon as I bring that up, Jansen, Rosenthal. K Rod and Kimbrell. So Shrek trying to nail down number 32. Marlin trying to get to two over and three out. With Digger lurking. Corey Dickerson. Couple hits and a strikeout. Guy who's got power, 18 home runs on the year for Dickerson. He takes a big hack, and that's not unusual.
Good game for Salty back there too. One one. Dickerson a two run homer. In last night's ball game. Thirty one thousand here. On a Saturday night in Denver. Their ball club is twenty seven under. Though just one under at home they're a much different team here. See Shaq misses low with a fastball. Go over thirty thousand two nights in a row. Hats off to the Rockies fans. Talk about way gone. Number 19 on the year for Dickerson, and that was uh, almost uh, a mile high. He hit that in that third tier of seats. A long way out of here. Well, we talk about Cshek when he has trouble. Uh, you see pitches above the knees. And Ciszek misses up and in to Michael McHenry. A poorly located fastball ends up located in the third deck. And so Dickerson ties it. It's 4 4. McHenry fouls it back. And now Ciszek has to get it to the 10th. It's a foul ball and at another mistake pitch a slider that uh, wasn't sharp didn't have that good bite that we see a lot from Steve C. Sheck and look at that middle of the plate. Well, he's one and two. Chuck Hernandez watching. A blown save for Ciszek. A 4 4 game in Denver. And a 2 and 2 count to the Rockies catcher Michael McHenry. He's out. And it's three and two. Rocky fans. Looking for more. C Shek looking for a strike, and he misses badly. Chuck Hernandez doesn't like what he sees, and he's on his way out to the mound. Well, the inning started with Arenado bouncing out to Echeverria. Dickerson took a fastball on the inside part and hit it up into the third deck in right field. If Ciszek can get through this inning, one thing the Marlins have going for him is that the Rockies have run through five relievers already, including their closer. The Troy Hawkins.
Culberson now, who's one for three. Good pitch. You see where it was located. And that's where Ciszek needs to live down in that area. McHenry not a base dealing threat. And it's 0 2. Braves down 1 0 in the eighth in Cincinnati. Angels have tied Oakland 1 1, bottom seven in Oakland. Cardinals and Phillies play on 5 5, bottom 11. Here in Colorado, the Marlins had a brief 4 3 lead. Danny Echeverria RBI single in the ninth. Corey Dickerson hitting his second homer in two nights. You know when you watch the velocity it's usually about where Ciszek is but it's the command that isn't there right now. Dolberson just got a piece. That's the thirty third. Home run to get to the third deck. Brandon Moss in 2012 was the last to go up there for Oakland. And Ciszek, who was out front 0 2, has gone to 3 and 2 now. On Culberson, and now you might see McHenry on the move. Yeah, you wonder if Walt Weiss will have him move him. I, I would think he would. It seems like he's What's played he the game that way. What's he got to lose? He's got to lose if they've, they've won 50 games. Not running, and it's fouled back. Of course, you never know. He may have uh, sent the sign out, and McHenry may have either missed it or decided not to run. That happens a lot. You know, we'll see something not take place, or we'll see a runner go up, go off and run, and we think maybe one thing when in fact it's the other. Not running, and that would be strike three called. Ciszek gets the second out, but he needs one more for the Marlins to see the tenth inning. Well, he just went right down the middle with a fastball and froze Culberson. Drew Stubbs. Will pinch hit. This is the pitcher spot. Stubbs swings and misses. Now Stubbs has got power, and he could end it with one swing. And of course, this is a, a ballpark with enormous dimensions and gaps. So McHenry at first, the winning run with two outs. Stubbs 13 homers, 18 doubles. This is game number 106 for him. You made a good point, Rich, when you talked about Ciszek trying to get this game to the 10th inning because the Marlins are in better shape if it gets to that point in their bullpen without question. They haven't used as many. They didn't use as many guys last night. And if the Marlins do live to see the 10th, it's the top of the order. Nick Massett was the last guy we saw down in the bullpen. One, two. Wow. Close. Right on the edge.
Counts two and two. In the left, it's a base hit. Yelich picks it up. And the inning continues. Here comes Rutledge. And now the winning run is standing at second base. Well, Rutledge, you remember, came into the game in a double switch and got a base hit off Brian Morris to start things in the eighth inning. Good numbers on the year with runners in scoring position. Well, now the outfield shortens up, trying to put themselves in a spot. You can't play too shallow. You don't want to ball over your head because that obviously would end the game, and a catch ends the inning. There's so much room in the outfield. A ground ball that gets through. Unless it's really scorched, is going to end the game. And remember, McHenry, the runner at second base, just uh, average at best, probably below average speed. Look at that 29 pitches in this inning for Steve Ciszek. Bouncer up the middle. Etch has got it. Flip to Solano. And the 10th inning is coming up in Denver tonight. Late night with the fish is. Just gotten a lot later. 4 4, Miami and Colorado. They've played nine to the tenth. Top of the order. Christian Yelich leads it off. innings presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky all season long. Jack Link's Beef Jerky feed your wild side. In Colorado. Rockies have to make some changes as. Corey Dickerson. Upper deck and I mean upper deck third deck. His home run ties it in the bottom of the ninth after the Marlins got a run in the top of the ninth. And here's the change. Nick Massett, you see the ERA right around six. Well, the Marlins uh, saw him a little bit in the ball game last night. He pitched an inning, gave up a couple of hits. So you you wouldn't want it any any better to have this part of the lineup start things in the tenth inning. So. Christian Yelich with that 10 game hitting streak on the line has a chance to extend it. Solano Stanton. And if anybody reaches 
McGee hit hard to short. Rutledge gets the out. The estimated distance on the Dickerson home run is 455 feet. That was a, a majestic blast. Purple Mountain Majesty. He almost reached that purple line. That used to extend there before they added the new uh, features up there. You know, that purple line that uh, represents the actual. Mile high 5,280 feet. Yeah, they, uh, so those clubs up there are mile high. Yeah, those are I guess you could call them mile high clubs. You could, but we won't. But it's late night. It is late night, kids. Wouldn't that be a great idea, though, for a bar? I mean, I mean, seriously. I know, I know. He may have gone. He did. And Solano knew it. So Solano strikes out. And Nick Massett has the first two outs here in the tenth. And here comes Giancarlo Stanton. Been a tough night for Donovan Solano. 0 for 5. He struck out three times. He walked with the bases loaded and an RBI in the fourth inning. Infield uh, swung over to the left side for Stanton. Stanton two more hits adding to his uh, Coors Field legacy. Pretty good curveball from Massett for strike two. One and two. Chris Hatcher in Miami's pen. That curveball not so sharp as the first. That's what really counts two balls, two strikes. That's called not being able to repeat that same delivery with the breaking ball. There's one hit against Massett, a homer. But he has struck out twice. McHenry wants a breaking ball. Stanton check swing. Three and two. All right, he's missed with the breaking ball his last two times. I mean, I know he's pitching carefully to stand. Yeah, it's it's like if you're John Carlo, you certainly got to be ready for the fastball in case. Breaking but, ball, uh, he just got a piece. Yeah, he had a good good cut at that breaking ball. Another one of those double digit games and strikeouts. The Marlins have struck out 13 times tonight. Tried to sneak that fastball in under his hands. So another 3 2 coming with two outs in the top of the 10th in a 4 4 game. Another breaking ball. Don't think he offered it that. Now the home plate umpire says he did. Stand right now with Tim Timmons. Timmons said he went. Stan was already on his way to first. And the Marlins denied the base runner. Here's a look. 
Oh, he did not go. That's that's one of the best players in the game. That's that's not right. Brought to you by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com. And by Florida Power and Light. In Colorado, John Carlos Stanton, not a happy guy in right field. Rung up on a check swing by the home plate umpire, Tim Timmons. Well, and rightfully so, uh, unhappy because 95% uh, of the time on, on that type of check swing, the home plate umpire will. Take a look at the first base umpire and at first base Tim Welke a number of times tonight has had no swings on various hitters. To me it's one of the mysteries of the game. Why a catcher on a call where. A hitter doesn't go around can ask the umpire for an appeal at first that one is ripped to right. Stanton over for it. Blackman. Has himself a solid single and Hatcher needs to get some outs. Because the Rockies. We got the home run from Dickerson, the top of their order. They've got speed at first now in Blackman. Boy, third hit tonight for Charlie Blackman, who continues to have just a solid year. And you're right, Chris Hatcher has his work cut out for him. He's got to make sure Blackman stays close to the bag. Mentioned his uh, 22 steals. He was thrown out, though, in the fifth inning on a perfect throw by Salta Lamacchia. Let's see how the Rockies play this. Barnes has a two run homer. Hatcher working from the stretch. Barnes is bunting. And he fouls it up the first baseline. And I've never understood why a catcher has the courtesy of asking an umpire to get an appeal, whereas the hitter does not. That's a good point. Because the umpire obviously has rendered a a call behind the plate that the catcher doesn't like so he gets to appeal if he has that decision that the hitter doesn't like there is no appeal. Blackman chase back. Again this is Coors Field and the Marlins have seen it. Everyone in Major League Baseball has seen it. The Rockies in this ballpark have the magical powers to come back. Late innings. Dramatic home run here to tie it. Now they're trying to walk off in the 10th. Well it's a it's the type of game really and I mentioned it earlier when it was three to three the Marlins have to feel fortunate. They're still in this game. They've had all kinds of magical moments but they haven't made any magic. They've left 14 on base. They're two for 12 with runners in scoring position. Eef. Good move by Hatcher.
right now Charlie Blackman is saying that's as far as I want to get. And Eric Young may be telling him that too. Counts 0 and 1 on Barnes who tried to bunt the first pitch and fouled it off. Tries to bunt that one and it knocks him over. He went after that as if it were a squeeze. Count 0 and 2. That wasn't that far in. in fact, <laughs> no, it was. That was over the plate. That was just a bad attempt. Yeah, first first sight, it looked like that ball was right at him. Hatcher trying to manage this inning here. Charlie Blackman to lead off hit in the bottom of the tenth. The winning run. There at first base. Good speed. Hatcher 0 and 2 on Brandon Barnes, who bunts again, pops it foul, and he strikes out. Are you surprised? That's always the, uh, totally. I, I mean, just, that's, that does not make sense at all. Now, again, that could have been on him and not from Walt Weiss, but totally surprised. First of all, you got a guy who swings a bat, all right. Secondly, you have tremendous speed at first base, you have a guy who can steal a base. And yes, you'll see a pitcher bump with two strikes, but rarely a hitter, especially in that situation. Yeah, I was surprised. Barnes hit a two run homer in the third inning. I mean, Chris Hatcher will take it. Let's see if he can follow it up. It's Morneau who lined out to finish the eighth his last time up. Talking about Morneau and that long dry spell that he had. He snapped it last night with this homer off of Henderson Alvarez. He got 130 at bats without one. You can see the look on his face when he got back to the dugout. Finally. <laughs> to left. And Yelich is under it. He makes the catch. Runner tags. Blackman's coming. Yelich's throw. And he's in there. Kind of had the feeling once you saw Blackman go back and tag up. He knows this ballpark. He knows how deep the outfielders are. He knows the outfielder's arms. And I think Yelich could have done a little better job in circling this. See, he's caught flat-footed. He has to anticipate that Blackman might do that. And if he anticipates it, he might make a little better throw. See, right there, after he catches it, then he looks at Blackman instead of getting ready for it initially. And that he's got to get help, and it's on Yelich, but he also needs a little help from his teammates. His infield, someone's got to tell him he's tagging yeah. and coming before he sets up to catch the ball. So it's Arenado. And Hatcher wants to talk to Salt Lamacchia. And the winning run is in scoring position. Hey, a big play by uh, Charlie Blackman. Heads up play on his part. Marlins live right after this one. Highlights, analysis, and all of that. You got Dickerson on deck. He's the reason everyone is still here. His home run tied at the bottom of the ninth. And Hatcher gets a strike. Good block, Salt Lamakia. 
a good piece of it. Salty as he always does, has those fingernail stickers on to help the pitcher see the signs a little bit better. I'm always amazed when a catcher blocks a ball like that. You noticed as he blocks it, he's also taking a peek at the runner. All right, see the signs a little bit better. Those stickers come in a big sheet. He just peels them off and puts them on. The back, and it's two and two. Three career walk off hits. Marinado facing Hatcher with a count two and two. Some heat from Hatcher, 98. And Arenado stayed alive and fouled it off. Hatcher, the fourth out of the bullpen. Brian Morris, Mike Dunn, Steve Ciszek. Ozuna after it there and he makes a running catch. Good jump, good angle, nice play. 11th inning, here come the fish. The Marlins and the Rockies play on in Denver tonight. Ball season long, all night long. Even on late night with the fish is brought to you by Jack Lake's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. Well, Nick Massett will get Casey McGee, Garrett Jones, and Marcel Ozuna. The Marlins have used off their bench Jordani Valdespin and Jeff Baker.
McGee cracks one to the gap left center field Dickerson over to cut it and he gets there McGee opens the 11th with a base hit. Interesting when you think about this game both closers Latroy Hawkins and Steve Ciszek gave up the run. Yeah. So much for that title. So hits McGee with two more tonight. He had two last night. And now Jones who singled in the second. But is 0 for 4 since with three strikeouts. If really every pitcher has really worked him in with hard stuff as a hitter and up as well as a hitter. Do you. Do you back off the plate a little bit. You either back off or you maybe cheat and open up one time. I mean you might get caught on that if he goes away. But you have to change it up a little bit to make him change things. There he went away. Soft away, hard in. <laughs> Off speed and a strike. Two and one. There are those numbers. They've gone down a little bit. Brooks Brown. Nick Massett is the sixth reliever that the Rockies have used. And he finally came in and got Jones. And so Jones trots down to first. Yeah, and he got him with a breaking ball. He came in hitting with an 80 mile an hour, probably a curveball. And remember last inning, we talked about Massett. How when he throws that breaking ball, it's kind of all over the place. He's never out there in the same spot all the time. Good job by Jones to just turn in, glancing blow. Now here's Ozuna. Now the Marlins need to take advantage of that. And that prompts Jim Wright to spring into action. And you're probably not going to bunt Marcelo Ozuna. No. So Wright delivers his message. McGee the runner at second. You got Jones at first. Ozuna who had three hits. Including a grand slam last night has followed that up tonight. By going two for four. And scoring two runs. Yeah saw Brooks Brown down there the only other reliever down there for. Walt Weiss is uh, Matt Belisle. Saw him last night too. We talked about the residual effect of Tom Kohler going seven innings tomorrow. I think you're already feeling it tonight. Yeah. It's happening sooner than we thought. Ozuna liner off the glove of the shortstop. It rolls the second out there. McGee racing back. Safe there. That's a double play. They got the force at second. They tag McGee out. Jones should be out because he was forced out. Yeah, he touched the bag. He stepped on the bag. And McGee was tagged out. And it's really nothing you can do if you're Casey McGee because of the way that ball was hit. That's just bad luck. 
And so the Rockies end up getting two outs on a ball that bounced off the glove of Rutledge. So in case McGee does the right thing. You can see Jones is out right away when the second baseman Culberson right. picked the ball up with his foot on the bag. So there really isn't a whole lot that the runners can do in that situation. Nope. That's just flat bad luck. Bad luck and frustrating right there. Mm. As soon as it first. And Salt to Lamaki is up. Yeah, the frustrating part is Marcelo Zuna hit the ball on the nose. And Massett isn't showing great control either right now. To Lamakia, RBI double and a single. Well, the more you think about that play, Case McGee did the right thing. I mean, he saw that was a line drive that might be caught and headed back to second. He didn't want to get doubled off. And he's he's going through the, the scenario right now. Darned if you do, darned if you don't. Mm -hmm. Bouncer, it's a fair ball. And the Marlins are done. This game's going to the bottom of the 11th, still tied at four. An even later night than anyone anticipated. Bottom 11 in Colorado. Late night with the fish. Well, we've crossed over the midnight hour back east. Four runs, 12 hits. The big difference, left on base. Marlins have left 15, Rockies six. Chris Hatcher into his second inning of relief. The bottom of the 10th ended when Nolan Arenado hit a searing liner. Just to the right of Marcelo Zuna, who made a running catch. And that ended the Rockies' 10th. The Rockies' 11th begins with the guy that homered in the bottom of the ninth with one out off of Steve Ciszek. He didn't just homer. He hit a ball that was probably worth two homers. It was up into the third deck in right field. Boy, he's having a solid year. You saw the average 321. 
Dickerson smacks it center field. Ozuna is there and he makes the catch. Nice adjustment by Ozuna. He came racing in and then all of a sudden you could see the feet go to work. Stop little lateral movement and he was right there. Watch him out there. Started to race in. Summed it up. Sized it up. Put the brakes on a little bit. Put it away. Michael McHenry. And a strike. Two. Hatcher pitched the tenth. Cishek had the ninth. Morrison Dunn the eighth. In the air. Solano and he makes a nice play. Nice play by Solano in foul territory. We check in with uh, Allison Williams. What you up to? Oh, um, I was just doing my nails here with um, the game signs, like Salt of the Mafia. Has, uh, <laughs> so how do you think they look? They don't stick as well, though, when you have the uh, the nail polish already on your nails. So this is what he wears. They're game signs. They come in a sheet like this, and you just peel them off and stick them right on there. So that wouldn't be uh, what you'd call no. a French manic manicure. Um, you know what? A little bit because it's... On my nails, because they're longer, it only kind of covers on, on the tip of the nail. So it is kind of like a French tip, a yellow look, though. Can drop some signs. There you go. And and it matches well. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. It's a it's a nice little invention, but you wonder, there. The market is is pretty limited, right? Catchers. That's it. Catchers. Catchers. I'm trying to think if I saw, I didn't see a lot of the uh, the Little League World Series. I'm trying to think if any of the Little League catchers. Right, you seeing the Little League catchers with the, but then for it, some of the night games. Understood, but then again, it's it's only catchers. <laughs> it's a limited market, Hut. We got yeah, true. We got to find another use for these things. <laughs> Bouncer to short, Echeverria gets the out. Chris Hatcher, nice work tonight. Two scoreless innings for Hatch. 4-4 four, four game. And this was a 3-3 game going into the ninth. And the Marlins got themselves a run. And Danny Echeverria with an infield hit knocked in Marcelo Zuna. 
So it was 4-3, Steve C. check in, got the first out. Watch where this thing lands. A mile high. That was Corey Dickerson. That was a solo shot. And that was three innings ago. This is the 12th now, Brooks Brown. Out of the Rockies pen. Rockies are just about out of relievers. Well, a couple innings last night also for this right hander, Brooks Brown. Matt Belisle by my scorecard is it, right? That's it. It's really going to uh, be interesting tomorrow. With Christian Berkman and Brad Hand. Now both managers are, are going to expect and hope for the best and the most as far as innings out of those two with the way the bullpens have had been be used tonight and especially the last two nights for Colorado. The advantage the Marlins have though is they've got another Brad. They've got Brad Penny, who did warm up a bit tonight. So they the Marlins do have a long man that can work tomorrow. The Rockies and the Rockies are pretty good at this. They've been doing it a long time and they've had to pitch here. They've had to extend bullpens. They've had plenty of games like this. So you wouldn't be surprised if they get a, a fresh arm in here for tomorrow. If they don't, uh, as I'm looking at their schedule, have any off days coming up, they have after tomorrow's game, they head to San Francisco. They have a four game series. Against the Giants, and then on to Arizona for a three game series, and then back home for three games against San Francisco. So they got a lot of games in a row. Etch a tapper over the middle. Culberson has it and gets the out. Well, the day started with the Marlins watching the uh, Nationals beat the Giants six to two. Miami four back in the wild card. Once the Giants lost, they crept within three and a half. Try to win this ball game and get to within three. The fish also a game over. They can get to two over at 65 and 63. But the Dickerson homer in the bottom of the ninth. And it's still 4 4. Reed Johnson. One of the guys uh, Mike Redmond's talked about he really wants to get get going again. He knows the the plight of a guy who's not in there a lot. It's been a struggle. since the all star break for the veteran. But Mike Redmond has said he, he, he sees him having good at bats. He has had good at bats. A lot of them just haven't translated into base hits. First half of the season. He was the go to guy off the bench. Lately it's been Jeff Baker who's gotten hot. Yelich on deck. And Brown misses away. So that means everything in baseball is now a final except this one. Cincinnati finished off Atlanta 1 0. Mike Leak and Aroldis Chapman. The Dodgers beat the Mets seven to four. Oakland beat the Angels for the second straight night two to one. I'm told even the Broncos Texans preseason game is a final. Oh, that's a travesty. It's an outrage. <laughs> yeah. And Johnson strikes out. So with two outs here comes Yelich. Yelich strolls up to the plate for the seventh time tonight. Been on base a couple hit by a pitch and walked but still hitless. Oakland got the 
winning run in the bottom of the eighth on a wild pitch. Kansas City beat Texas 6 3. And the Tigers, who were clobbered in the first game of a doubleheader, 12 to 4, came back from behind to beat Minnesota 8 to 6 and get a split. But the Royals pick up a half a game because of that split. The Royals now a three game lead in the American League Central at Detroit. Detroit now has a, a V Mart and a JD Mart. Victor Martinez had three hits. JD Martinez had three hits. Pride of uh, Pembroke Pines. 1 1. 1 and 2. And the Cardinals in 12 innings beat the Phillies 6 to 5. And with that Brewers loss, the Cardinals are now a half game back in the National League Central. Yelich grinding out this at bat. It's two and two. 31,000 here when it started. Full count to Yelich. Marlin fans know it's late night. Checking the messages. Kids should be in bed back in Miami. Will Tapper out to second. And Yelich is out. One, two, three, go to fish in the 12th. Here come the Rockies in a 4 4 game. Side of the uh, ledger. Michael Kadir is on deck. And it looks like he will come up to pinch hit. Tomorrow's starters Brad Hand, Christian Bergman. Two o'clock local start, four o'clock start on the East Coast. That means a 3 30 curtain call for Marlins Live. Talk about your South Florida Honda dealers tomorrow. Sam Dyson for Miami. So with Kadir hitting, and this is the pitcher's spot, you would expect that Matt Belisle is up and throwing. 
Yeah, the other thing about Kadir, he's uh, missed a couple games with uh, some soreness in his hamstring. They were expecting, and he was hoping that he would at least be able to maybe play tomorrow on uh, Sunday. So you have to wonder all this time. He's been, I'm sure, getting treatment. He's been trying to keep the hamstring stretched out. If he sh he should reach base. They, they would have to use a starting pitcher or if Kadir's legs okay, he would run. But. Terrific work by Chris Hatcher. Two scoreless innings. There is Belial. Well, you think about it, the Rockies, with the exception of that home run by Dickerson, they, they scored three of their runs in the third inning, then got that home run in the ninth. Kadir Rutledge. And then top of the order, Charlie Blackman. But the frustrating thing for the Marlins tonight, the frustrating thing has been all the runners left on base. One of the few innings, top of the 12th inning, the Marlins went one, two, three. Good Dyer. In April and May, had that hamstring strain, the left hamstring. Spent 24 games on the disabled list. Left shoulder fracture as well this year, 59 more. Yeah, it's been an injury plague, a rough year for a guy who's very good friends with uh, Mike Redmond. That's right, their days in Minnesota. But it was just a week ago that he hit for the seventh cycle in Rockies history. He went triple, homer, single, double. Third player in Major League history to have a cycle in each league. John Olerud and Bob Watson. Remember one day here years ago, Todd Helton hit for the cycle against the Marlins. Marlins have never. Yeah, that's right. Hit for the cycle. All right, Michael Kadire. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what a cycle looks like. They got the triple out of the way. Got the tough one. Got the home run out of the way. Wow, it was a deep one. They got the big ones out early. There's a single. All he needs is a double. Looks like he got it down the line. He knew it, too. <laughs> and then Dyson goes three and two on him. Josh Rutledge next. It's out, and Kadir walks. Now, does he run for himself? That we'll find out. That is only the second walk issued by Marlins pitching tonight. Well, as expected, Tyler Matzik. Starting pitcher is the pinch runner. So Matzik is at first, and here's Rutledge. So now, if the uh, the Rockies play a sacrifice here, you got a pitcher over there running. So in the infield, you have to certainly you're aware of that. Did you get a sense? That one bunted. Dyson to first to get the out. Matzik slides into second. And Rutledge completes the sacrifice. And now the Rockies have two shots at it with Blackman and Barnes. It almost looked like when Kadir walked, he was trying to sell Walt Weiss in that he could stay in the game because he he didn't look like a guy with a bad hamstring going out to first. He he kind of Give it more than a jog down to first. It's almost like he wanted to show Walt Weiss, "Hey, my leg's okay." Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. And and Walt probably said, "You know what? 
but I, I'd like you to play tomorrow. I think the Marlins are going to walk Blackman. And set up a double play possibility with Barnes. You get a little closer to Morneau though. Blackman has been uh, on it tonight. He has. He's got three hits. And his only out was a loud out, a line drive out. Five hits in the series for Blackman. Sorry, he looked like the uh, Charlie Blackman of April and May. He's aboard. Brandon Barnes, a two run homer in the third. One of the interesting uh, nuggets from this. Uh, Extra inning affair was the tenth inning when Blackman singled the lead off the inning. Barnes was trying to bunt him to second, got to two strikes, and then tried to bunt with two strikes and fouled it off to strike out. Now you see that oftentimes with a pitcher. You rarely see it with a guy like Barnes in the two spot, especially a guy that had hit a two run homer. So Dyson looking for a ground ball. This was back in the third. And it just got out. On a curveball that wasn't too bad of a pitch. Tom Cole. Cole would go seven innings. Oh, one pitch from Dyson. 98 miles an hour. Uh, he has the uh, capabilities of getting a ground ball. If he throws that heavy fastball, keeps it down. Matzik the runner at second. Blackman the trail runner. So you hang around four hours, might get yourself a foul ball. Solano charges out there. Echeverria quick turn, safe there. And the Rockies are still alive. The Marlins almost turned it. It was not hard hit. And here comes Morneau. Yeah, it, it really didn't have double play written all over it because it wasn't hit that sharply. And Barnes runs pretty well. Good effort on both Solano and Echeverria's part. Just couldn't quite get it over there to beat Barnes. Good move by Etch to get out of the way of the slide, but because of Barnes' speed, the inning stays alive. So it's more no against Dyson. The winning run is 90 feet away. On an 0 for 5 night. Morneau homered last night. Center field. Echeverria got it. He made the catch. Oh, what a play. Echeverria in shallow center. A leaping backhand grab sliding on the grass. And he held on. And think of the situation. Game on the line. Echeverria comes through. The Rockies and the Marlins play on in Denver tonight.
Maria's terrific catch. And so another look. We talk so often about how at Coors Field you get a lot of balls and base hits that drop in because there's so much space out in the outfield. Outfielders a little deep. So infielders have to have speed and reactions. Just a tremendous play by Echeverria. Let's check in with Allison Williams. A Dub still with us. Guys, his teammates absolutely loved that catch by Echeverria. You should have seen him coming off the field. Everybody was grinning, laughing, kind of in bewilderment of the, the play that Echeverria just made. And as they uh, came into the dugout, they were clobbering him. High five, a lot of guys yelling oof. And that uh, definitely seemed to spark some new life on the bench here in the Marlins dugout. We'll see if they can carry that over to the plate. Well, since it's the only game going, that might get some attention. <laughs> Solano, Stanton, McGee against the last man in the Rockies bullpen, and that's Matt Belisle. And Belisle had trouble throwing strikes last night. He walked three and gave up a run in one inning. Ground ball. Morneau ventures to his right. Belisle gets to the bag. And an out here in the 13th. And that'll bring up Stanton. So eight relievers have worked for the Rockies. Five have worked for Miami. Yeah, so basically Walt Weiss and the Rockies have cleaned out their pen. Well, there's there's really nobody in the bullpen. Look at the bench over there. Wait, well, you you might have a, a bullpen catcher in case it continues on. You might have to use a starter, but that's about it. Stanton swings and misses. It counts 0-2. I don't think the bullpen catcher is even down there. He'll go down there if the starting pitcher has to go warm up. And Stanton strikes out. That's amazing. Belial couldn't throw strikes last night. And he's come in here and gotten two quick outs and didn't waste any time. John Carlo has a couple of hits tonight, but he's also struck out four times. Now McGee. McGee a couple of hits. In this ballgame, Miami got a brief one nothing lead. The Rockies erased it with three in the third. The Barlins quickly tied it. With a run in the fourth and a run in the fifth. And it wasn't until the ninth that another run was scored when Adani Echeverria's RBI single made it 4 3 and all looked good for Miami. Steve Ciszek came in, got the first out, and then Corey Dickerson back footed a, a fastball that Ciszek left in and down and put it in the third deck in right field. McGee's bouncer in the hole. Arenado spinning and throwing and getting McGee. That's a gold glove play by Arenado. And the Marlins down in order. Bottom of the 13th. 4 4.
bottom of the 13th late. Sam Dyson, his second inning of work. And he'll get Nolan Arenado. Corey Dickerson and Michael McHenry. And Dyson's fastball at 97 misses up. Arenado singled in the fourth. Of course, the Rockies a team without Carlos Gonzalez, without Troy Tulowitzki. Crack the left. It's deep on a line. And it's off the wall, and it's off of Yelich. And Arenado's got a double. He missed a homer by about five feet. Colorado's in business. Well, his second base hit tonight, and he crushed this ball. Hard power sinker, middle end, quickly over the head of Yelich. You got a little bit too close to the wall, but it was going to be a double all the way for Arenado. Who knows if he had gotten a little lift on that, this game would have been over. Leads the ball club in doubles, 31st of the year. Well, Dyson has a, a difficult road here. He's got Dickerson, who has hit it hard all night. He is three for five. He lined to center his last time up. And of course, he had the deep home run, third deck home run in the ninth. about remember last night Rich the uh, top three hitters for the Marlins were eight for 13 the top three hitters tonight for the Marlins two for 17 with eight strikeouts Dickerson right field base hit Third, Stanton's throw home. He is in there. And the Rockies walk off in 13. A big night for Corey Dickerson. He tied it in the ninth, and he wins it in the 13th. And a frustrating night for Miami here in Denver. Well, a couple of balls really hit hard. The double to start it by Arenado. Pretty good throw by Giancarlo, but Arenado runs well. Gets a good jump. Got himself a nice lead. And just beat the throw. And so Corey Dickerson's night finishes with a walk-off. 5-4 Colorado.